Proverbs chapter 9 verse 6 a scripture that just came into my spirit while the worship team was ministering Leviticus chapter 9 verse 6 please give it to us media Leviticus chapter 9 verse 6 I'd like us to read it together it's projected one to read and Moses said this is the thing which the Lord commanded that he should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you there is a thing that the Lord says to do and he says that when you do that the glory of the Lord surely without fail will appear the testimonies the mighty things that God is doing you see a miracle is not magic are we together now there are exact keys that produce these effects and for as long as you continue to play your part then there is no devil that will create another testimony I want you to lift your voice and say Lord I'm ready to do whatever it takes to cause the glory to be manifested in my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray whatever it takes whatever it takes oh God whatever it takes to see your glory to see your power pray make sure you pray desire to see your glory in our lives please pray there is a way the glory of God can be so real in your life we are praying shala prakatu sebriyata Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run. as a revelation the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends darkness trembles in your Darkness trembles in your 
me give us a prayer point lord teach me your ways so that every darkness in my life will flee teach me your ways lift your voice and pray teach me your ways I don't want to shadow box my destiny, guessing and hoping I am right. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. He says, and the light shineth in darkness. There is a light that can shine and bring to end every darkness. There is a light that can shine. Please pray inside, outside, online. Teach me your ways. Show me your presence. Lord, do not hide it from me. Show me the mysteries of dominion. Show me the mysteries of grace. Show me the secrets of the Spirit. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. Teach me your way. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Jeremiah chapter 17. Please keep standing. My spirit is fired up tonight. Jeremiah 17 verse 8. This is a prophecy for someone in this place tonight. Jeremiah 17 verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes listen it says but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit lift your voice in one minute and i want you to receive this prophetic word lord i receive it be childlike enough to receive it. I receive it as a word from you to me. As a word from you to my destiny. That I shall be like a tree by the waters. I shall spread my roots by the rivers. I will not need to wait for a season to receive nourishment. My roots spread. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we ask you to help us. We have come to receive, we have come to grow, we have come to rise. We have come to be blessed. We have come to access the keys of power, the keys of dominion. We have come for nourishment. 
and I pray oh God that by your spirit you will bless us tonight our hearts are open our hearts are humble and we are ready to receive in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please be seated I want us to specially appreciate all those following us online I think that um, we need to let them know that they are part of us go ahead and give them a big God bless you all those following us online praise the Lord and for those outside I'm aware the weather is uh, quite cold and um, it was drizzling earlier on thank you for your understanding your sacrifice and your patience let's honor them those inside thank you thank you so much hallelujah extraordinary fruitfulness I want to challenge you tonight the Lord put a very fiery message in my spirit extraordinary fruitfulness extraordinary fruitfulness Genesis chapter 12 extraordinary fruitfulness one of the things that God has been doing in this place according to the word he gave us this year a year of triumph is that he's been guiding us precept upon precept line upon line helping us to understand the systems of the kingdom let me tell you something one of the best ways you can bless a man is enlightenment one of the best ways you can bless a man it's not like we usually say it's not to give him a fish or to give him money or give him a, a shoe or a dress all those things are mundane they are carnal they will come and pass a thief can steal it are we together now but enlightenment is intrinsic is lasting it will never change when you enlighten a man to enlighten a man is to create illumination to help the man to access knowledge and understanding in fact let me digress a bit before we start our teaching for tonight I want you to write three words down I was contemplating on these words and thank you Holy Spirit I remember saying that I would share it with us knowledge understanding wisdom these three things we have confused them but they are not the same they work together like the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken knowledge understanding wisdom knowledge means um, the gathering or access to information when you are talking about knowledge you are talking of access to information not necessarily benefiting from it just access to information the moment an information comes to you capable of changing you is called knowledge now understanding is different from knowledge in that understanding talks about comprehension not just access comprehension the fortitude to comprehend the moment you are talking of understanding understanding talks about comprehension a comprehension of the underlying principles that are responsible for that outcome listen nothing ever happens on its own in this earth nothing ever happens evil or good nothing ever happens on its own hallelujah miracles do not happen just like that tragedies do not just happen failure does not just happen success does not just happen the anointing does not just come people don't just backslide there is always um, certain operations that are initiated whether in ignorance are we together now if I kick this speaker by mistake the pain will not refuse to come to my leg and say I think it's a mistake as far as the system of pain is concerned I did it intentionally are we together now so in ignorance we have activated a lot of spiritual laws and discoordinated them and we have become victims victims of the 
interplay of those laws is like cutting a naked wire and putting it on your head by mistake when it's raining now whether you are aware or not the wire will not excuse that mistake will it shock you yes understanding the bible says with all your getting get understanding we celebrate knowledge so much but let me tell you knowledge without understanding is the same thing as not knowing it at all the lot of one who just has knowledge without understanding and the lot of one who does not have knowledge at all is the same their destinies will eventually be the same doom so it's not enough to access knowledge as good as it is access to an information capable of changing you is not enough you must be able to understand the dynamics of its operation this is where understanding comes in gathering the ingredients to make rice does not produce rice it shows you that there is a potential for you to enjoy delicious rice but with the availability of that ingredients you can mess that entire you can waste those ingredients to look like they were not there because there is no understanding it is understanding that will tell you when to apply what one careless mistake and you produce something else that's how life is it's not enough for us to just have knowledge i know i know i know that in the economy of god people should be blessed i know that people can be anointed yes i'm aware i know that people can grow i know that demons are real i know that restoration is real i know that tithing and offering helps people to be blessed that level of knowledge has too much vagueness there is no comprehension of the dynamics tithing blesses people but what is the operation behind it restoration is a possibility but what is the key that activates it rising from glory to glory excelling in the midst of recession is a possibility rising without any support uncle auntie whatsoever is possible but do you understand the dynamics that activate it favor is a provision in the kingdom but do you have do you have an understanding do you have a comprehension you see let me tell you something anything you cannot reproduce again and again you do not understand it's as simple as that it is possible to have a short-term result based on pure luck pure luck you play a football by mistake and it's cause a goal it's still a goal but you may not be able to repeat it again our example of that rice you can mix nonsense and by mistake things just fall in place and you produce a delicious meal but you cannot reproduce it again now let me tell you something many believers including spiritual people are largely celebrators of knowledge celebrators of access to spiritual information oh i know the book of this and that and that it says this should happen and they say wow what a an intelligent quarter of scripture Cain and Abel had access to the same materials but their combinations produced an effect that brought woe to one and made another person's sacrifice acceptable you must cry for understanding you must cry for understanding and then wisdom talks of application you see that knowledge talks of an acquisition of information useful information strategic information understanding talks of the comprehension of the dynamics how to make it produce result then wisdom is now the experiential application of what you know understanding a thing and not having the commitment to apply it until it produces result is still nonsense bible tells us that the word of god can be made of non-effect It says the word did not profit them those who heard it not being mixed with faith not that what they had was wrong but it was not mixed with action responses of obedience to validate that they believe god please pay attention to what i'm saying very simple keys but they are responsible for the pain of so many people very simple keys but they can be responsible 
for the retrogression of a man for ages hallelujah so knowledge talks about the acquisition of information understanding talks of the comprehension the dynamics the working principles that produce that result so you are not just seeing an effect or whatever it is you understand the underlying principle and then wisdom is the ability to apply it so that you now get a tangible result knowing that fasting and prayer will help you grow that's just understand that's just knowledge knowing what in fasting and what in prayer makes you grow is understanding then engaging it sincerely and passionately so that your life becomes the result of all that gist is wisdom you can know it you can teach it and never walk in it now this is the challenge with men in the body of christ there is hardly i have i've said it again and again that i am i don't think that the body of christ is in ignorance the challenge of the body is not ignorance by the grace of god we have gone past the realm of ignorance there's almost no dimension of the system and the realities of the kingdom that you bring to the body of christ that people will be shouting as though they've never heard it no it may just be presented in another way maybe more intelligently or more comprehensively in more detail and clarity articulated more more intelligently but generally they understand they have an idea that such a dimension is in the kingdom but very few people are able to walk in it and God has declared for us that this is a year of triumph I don't want you see knowledge is to know understanding is to hear the message wisdom is to engage it and then you see the results in your life if you don't see the results in your life you will be frustrated first in the secret and then later on the frustration will so build you cannot hide it again it will become clear that this thing is frustrating you like many people are already giving up this is half of the year already and many people are just packing up and saying lord this thing doesn't work no you're not understanding it is what makes it look like it doesn't work i can switch this mic off and, and think because i switched it off it doesn't work no there is a system knowing that you can use a mic to amplify your voice is just knowledge understanding the dynamics of his operation a comprehension of the same that's understanding then switching it on and using it now qualifies me to enjoy the blessing i can hold a mic i can draw it i can snap with it and never amplify my voice please i want you to be frustrated um not i don't mean it in a negative way but i i want you i think a better word is to be dissatisfied with acquisition of so many spiritual informations with less than 10 percent of them experientially manifesting in your life nobody works well under such a condition hallelujah you must cry for knowledge it's better for me to know god 10 percent and have an experience of him seven percent that's an a student in the spirit because you are gauged based on what you know than to claim to know God 60% and your result shows 2%. That's a very terrible situation. Some even claim 90% and the result is 1%, 1 the experience. Vet your spiritual life to make sure you are really getting this thing. If you are not getting it, stop running, retreat and find out where did I miss it. I've just been acting, acting without understanding. Lord, where have I missed it? Because you see, life will test you and force you to reveal whether you understand this word or not. Hallelujah. But the Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. It is my desire from the depth of my heart 
that many of us are going to begin to produce extraordinary results in our lives don't let anyone ever fool you that it does not matter sooner or later you will see that god's obsession is in our bearing fruit hearing john 15 verse 8 hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit right so shall you be my disciples that is the proof that you have been listening to me sisters if you give birth to a baby and you've been breastfeeding this baby every day for one year two years three years and then the baby cannot walk cannot grow cannot talk what happens to the mother do you celebrate the child and say it's all right i know you are coming up no you know there is a problem so when you have been taking the milk of the world the meat of the world the bones of the world and eventually no growth no result no transformation something is wrong something is wrong there is a difference between the weight in faith and the weight hopeless waiting that is as a result of you're not even knowing what you are doing are we together like a farmer plants he knows by the dry season there's a bumper harvest waiting for him so he waits in hope he waits in faith but someone who never went to the farm if he starts buying bags waiting for september that's not a wise man please learn this nothing just happens everything that must happen in your life and my life will require you engaging the mysteries of the kingdom engaging the mysteries of the kingdom not random engagement engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you understand the mysteries that have been apportioned to deliver the results you want the results you want hallelujah let's get down to the business of tonight extraordinary fruitfulness one time jesus was on his way doing his father's business and the bible says that he saw a fig tree and the leaves were green it looked very attractive and then the bible says that jesus came very hungry he came hoping to find something to eat and when he came in hunger he saw that tree blossoming yet there was no fruit and then the bible says he cursed the tree cursed it and spoke over it that no fruit will grow there again the bible there shows us how it grieves the heart of the father to see a believer a ministry a family a people an individual who cannot produce evidences that validate that God is alive fruitfulness is a big deal to God fruitfulness is a big deal to God it's not just a proof that you are growing fruitfulness is a sign that God is not a liar his integrity is at the mercy of your fruitfulness to be validated here on earth that he is not a liar God is a God that expects fruitfulness. He gave a parable of the talents. Matthew 25. He gave unto one five, two and one. He expected multiplication. He expected fruitfulness. The first manifestation of the blessing that he gave man is be fruitful. Are we together? Not just subdue. Not just have dominion. Be fruitful fruitful it was not a suggestion it was a command meaning i have put in you all the resources that will take to produce a life of fruitfulness genesis chapter 12 now the lord had said to abram this is the lord having an encounter with an idol worshiper whose life is about to change who will epitomize greatness for the believer who will become the portrait of god's idea of greatness a portrait of god's idea of a blessed man a portrait of god's idea 
of success a portrait of God's idea of a balanced Christian life that is both useful to the advancement of the kingdom and at the same time to humanity he says now the Lord had said unto Abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you verse 2 as at this time this was, this was not yet his experience it was God's proposal to him come out of a system and submit yourself through a season of dealing and if you successfully pass through that this will be the result verse 2 and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing verse 3 and then we'll stop there and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall how many all the families of the earth be blessed in you through you with reference to you as a foundation as a cornerstone the entire race the entire globe will be blessed now i like us to observe certain things here god meets an idol worshiper with his philosophies with his ideas are we together now having a little influence you would call him a local champion he was not a weak man he was not a failure as it were an idol worshiper and then he tells him let's go to verse one again abraham number one your name is wrong number two your life your philosophies everything i thought he would just bait him and say abraham i have great plans for you the thoughts that i have for you even if you know it i mean he said abraham the first requirement will be to leave your status quo your system listen in the economy of god and in the dealings of god when god begins to do business with a man he never uses you as you are please understand this you come as you are but you are never sent as you are you come as you are and then the first thing god proves in you is humility and meekness the beginning of the dealings of god in the life of a man the the starting point is when god sees that there is sufficient grace for humility and teachability this man was not a failure this man was a local champion in his own respect an idol worshiper a diviner an invoker of the heavens could manipulate strange powers to his advantage and here comes a word from a deity who calls himself the god of the hebrews and he says abraham get thee out you know how painful it is get thee out abraham i know this philosophy has worked for you but before i introduce a higher perspective get thee out i preached a message years ago from this scripture called come out of your father's house now many believers in the kingdom please listen carefully many believers in the kingdom when we come to god number one we come with our pride hoping that we are okay by ourselves then number two we hope that he will only add to what the garbages that culture the garbages that our mistakes our failures have given to us and we say lord i am here um let's just continue the classes and god says i don't know who that lecturer was but when i come to you even if you have been 10 years in this business my first requirement is that i isolate you you have to come out of that system you have to come out of that way of doing things we're talking about fruitfulness let's understudy abraham very carefully because the bible tells us please give us isaiah 51 and verse 1 and 2 the bible gives us an assignment that every time we want to study success fruitfulness greatness in the kingdom he gives us a figure it personifies God's idea of a life of impact in a figure and then he, this is what he says um, let's go to verse 2 he says look unto Abraham understudy him 
look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you he says for I called him alone huh? and blessed him you see God is speaking in summary but it didn't happen as immediate as that I called him I blessed him I increased him three things I called him I blessed him I increased him I called him I blessed him I increased him this is knowledge when you now begin to seek understanding you know that it's not just I called him I blessed him that call in its own is a subject that is worth studying Abraham leave your father's house that's part of I called him are we together now and then he says I blessed him and increased him in other words he is my idea of a man truly called of God he's my idea of a man truly blessed of God and is my idea of a man who has experienced increase then he says look unto him if you want to experience his result that order of fruitfulness look unto him I hope you know Abraham experienced barrenness in his life physical barrenness and that qualifies him to truly be a replica or a portrait of God's idea of fruitfulness when God calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when God calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment God calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture it's not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart brothers and sisters I submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of Christ proud men of God proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility your humility is your past and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes I want to be an anointed man I want to carry the anointing I want to carry revelation I want fame I want power no I'm showing you the system of God God's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 <coughs> Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of Christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance pride and arrogance pride and arrogance I know I think I know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level but I know oh I'm educated enough I know look I'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person 
submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this i know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life i know my father is a pastor or was a pastor i know i was a bible study coordinator when i was on campus i know i married a pastor my husband is a pastor i know this and that you see all sorts of arrogant people many of us young people are arrogant i know i know what to do i know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents i know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this i know mentality there's nothing i know that drives the spirit of god like a a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart i show you the secret of great men they are they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before god where you lose the ability to argue with god god i, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. abraham i know you have servants abraham i know you have a wife abraham i know you are a local champion but i'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye thee out of your accolades i am a this i've held 10 crusades i am a man of god i am so 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 and so and so no get thee out of your country get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your father's house onto a land that I will show you are we together you want to be fruitful the first key is that disposition of humility everybody say grant me grace to be meek to be humble to be broken hallelujah I will never argue with God's opinion I'm too young I'm too small I'm too naive to argue with God's opinion he's the fountain of wisdom some of us have been trading this childlikeness this this reckless abandon for years and look what he's done look what he's done but there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom and we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever number two genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still the second key listen the second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence ah. i will go i will go anywhere you lead me I will go Lord I will go I will go anywhere you need yeah. I will go one more time I will go I will go economy he does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey the name of the mission is follow me the god i serve will never give you detailed instructions when you meet with god 
he doesn't start telling you one day he shows you the end and leaves you there he will never tell you what the process will be the mission is follow me why will i leave something i am sure of into something i am unsure of i'm sure of my country i'm sure of my kindred i'm sure of my father's house are we together you are sure of your certificate you are sure of the support of your parents you are sure that if you fail and there is no job your elder sister can be giving you twenty thousand. then he tells you come out to where a land that i will show you do you know what it means to ask an adult oga where are you going he says i'm following god <laughs> he says, i know i understand where to and he says honestly let me be sincere with you the only thing i know is the end of this journey i know that i will become a fruitful man i know that my name will be great i will be exceedingly fruitful that's all i know the the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me but i trust him but i trust him many of you see great people and think god gave them the details it's faith that opened up the details over people started ministry people god sent people to lands first night they slept under the bridge what are you doing in lagos sir god sent me you are a graduate come along with your certificate he asked me to leave it at home what are you now doing under the bridge this is the only place i know in lagos yet god said you will raise a people listen a man who does not trust god will never experience fruitfulness this our carnal sensual generation that wants oh god you must show me how one plus one becomes two the mission is follow me if you trust him enough follow me i will go i will go anywhere you lead me You know me i'm a fan of responsibility i like responsible people but let me tell you something nobody's destiny appears from the beginning the vision speaks in the end it is follow me i asked jimmy something one time jimmy sorry <clears throat> let me talk about you again <clears throat> and jimmy said something to me one time he said there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great nothing looks great from beginning you only have the architectural plan which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people it is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation then everybody starts saying i used to know a jimmy i used to know promise i used to know pastor alpha don't worry, i know them i remember when we we're taking gary and so on and so forth you see we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start somewhere along the journey we should see results but you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey what you ask for is the word of god that's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser where is the greatness with one palms where is the greatness when you cannot afford hundred naira to bob your hair where is the greatness where the only bible you can afford is gideon's international that was given free during evangelism but i know he called me i know there is greatness i i can't show you where it is where are the members where is the tv station where are the workers they are in the loins of trust i trust him i trust him my obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them god is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results it's a joke nobody gets results as an inheritance you get up and start walking on that water is as you walk on the water it begins to part if you are waiting for it to part before you walk you will die there at the red sea because pharaoh is coming tell the people of israel to move forward the bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils did you see his nose physically 
it was a revelation that was given to a man so he was standing and waiting for them and I can imagine Moses coming over 2.5 million people in the next five minutes you can be a dead man for bringing such a stupid news from the presence of God to people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of Pharaoh will come back to kill them and Moses said look this is what God told me move forward now Bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again know that I died believing and God says that's the person initiating me trust Himarama hey. Himaram. You are seated on the throne Himaram. You are seated on the throne Listen Listen If you had seen me 15 years ago There are people who know me some of the things you celebrate today was not there everything was in the loins of the foolishness follow me follow me follow me who told you you are the first to be given that instruction are you the first gentleman to be established oh i'm taking it easy you know a, a job has not come yet and uh, you know the way we are please i'm not a stupid person i understand responsibility the key to fruitfulness is lord i trust you if i perish let it not be that i perished in armed robbery but i perished the first crusade that we were going to no money no nothing we had just about 20 people i've shared it with you some of our ladies were climbing the tree firewood yet god told me one day i will bless nations and people are climbing firewood don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life. It's a, it's a costly statement. Never use your result or lack of it now to mean God did not speak. When God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. I'm bringing you intelligence tonight because there are many great men and women refusing to step out especially some of us brothers i don't just mean step out carelessly this fear factor must be broken nobody gives you guarantee when a generation of guarant of guarantors open an account i need a guarantor do business i need a guarantor what if something happens move on with your life start the building project this risk averse fearful mentality is a sign of carnality it's not play it safe in the kingdom you play it as you trust him when god says move brothers and sisters you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving if it be thou bid me come and he said peter come come peter you've never done it but it does not mean it can not be done there are many of us today there are many of our families there are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now. God spoke to them 10 years ago. They had 100,000. God said, go, it can buy one tipper of sharp sand. Go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil. Say, no, 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 you know, we're intelligent people. We went to school. You don't build like that. And it's 20 years. The person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses. But somebody who cannot trust God. Listen, the raw material in God's economy is faith. 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 Not uncle. Not auntie. God uses men. But it comes from God through men to you. When you want it from men, you will die like a chicken. Are we together? Second key. Trust. Let me tell you something except it's not the God of heaven you are going to walk with no matter who assures you in the flesh get set for fatal disappointment 
God himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be cut and he will say walk have you seen how children walk no matter how you love your child a day will come you must allow that child walk and truthfully speaking the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person that does not mean walking is not a possibility you clean the wound and say stand up continue walking you don't tell people oh sorry you were building the house and rain washed it or you know or, no the church has become a weak place no results because we cannot trust God I trust God though, except I don't hear him if God says move there is no devil no devil in hell no devil in hell that can stop me because it is as you move that you commit him. your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you go and ask any great man in the kingdom nobody gave him any assurance all this auxiliary faith you see people I love God but what they mean is there is one uncle the uncle promised me that when it gets too hot I should run back no you are not standing by faith after two days you are disturbing everybody calling everybody and saying look I, I trusted God it's just that the way this thing is no you are not serious I mean if I perish I perish Lord I would know you for myself now if you don't give me this rent let me sit outside and you would think it's a joke you are bringing your mattress outside to sit and God says ah this realm of trust gone are the days we used growing up we used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame God vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust God that far we never trust God that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, I can't remember when years ago when I was in Kaduna I, I went to do something in Kaduna and I was coming back to Zaria my transport money was not complete I'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete I was hungry and I said I'm standing at the road here and there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport there is a little restaurant there and food there is 15 era why stand and die here at least let me satisfy one of the two i entered and i ate beans and yam 15 naira. i knew i was in trouble brothers and sisters i remember standing at that road and the spirit of god spoke to me he said stop a car and enter i stopped a vehicle and i entered to zaria i didn't say hey, please uh, i'm a man of god there is a call of god on my life it's not clear now but i want to trust me if i rise you will rise too if i eat you will eat too that's what we are doing now and we call faith i started engaging a conversation with someone when we passed Jaji and we were on our way coming then later the man the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him i knew i was in trouble but i knew i was not alone are we together now money can fail you men can fail you but his presence and his word will never fail never fail never fail if your confidence is in what you have in your bank account then something is really you are on your way to being frustrated if your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box or one one shoe or one whatever it is your confidence must be in the name of the lord his presence are you getting blessed tonight do you know the gentleman i was talking with just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um for that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what I had, I, I can't remember whether I could bring me or not. And the Holy Spirit told me to enter a bus again. I entered a bus, someone paid it. I stopped at Northgate with the same money I was at Kaduna. It was a message. Listen, I've done stupid things in my life. There are times that I believed God. Well, now I don't know whether it's God that spoke to me or not. But I remember trekking from Area BZ to First Bank. By faith, believing there's money in my account. They were paying workers and I joined them. 
and when it got to my turn they said there was no money I was not embarrassed I was walking my faith I didn't use that I knew that one day no problem I went there and they said sorry are you expecting a transfer I said yes it has not reflected no problem after wasting two hours of my time I thought it was a waste but now I know it was a school it was my school fees I was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith because there is nothing that God says today that cannot be done listen you don't grow just by reading the Bible there must be an experience that will force you force you for as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people counseling is easy but one day God will say Mr. Man you have been encouraging people to walk on that water and you have been sitting down today walk on this water and you have to stand up and walk everybody say Lord I trust you say it Lord I trust you say it one more time Lord I trust you government cannot assure anybody insurance cannot assure anybody this person talking to you is not daft I understand these things none of those things can ensure you a man who trusts the Lord can watch his house on fire and other people are saying hey catch him let him not have hypertension and say me hypertension where is the hand that builds the house in the first place I, I don't regret but he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes he said I can't lose sleep because my God has infinite supply now that's a man who has been walked on by the spirit high blood pressure depression is a sign of not trusting God period it's an uncomfortable truth but know it there are doctors here ask them young people now you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself is it this room is it that and you are, are you okay he says how can i be okay life no you don't trust god so everybody wants this auxiliary thing ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now shoe car estate it's a joke brothers are looking for a lady who is working to wage them while they are looking for a job look at what society is becoming a pastor is looking for quality members now we select the sheep it's not just God that brings the increase God brings the increase we choose we throw away some sheep to die then we choose the quality sheep make them whatever it is a pastor or elder or whatever to pin them down and we say we have faith that's nonsense faith is when weak people come to you like David in the cave of Adullam and you tell them look I see the grace and the hand of God in you and after three years you produce signs and wonders and they bless them there are people today God has used me to lift I will never be hungry till Jesus comes now you would think uh, he's just lucky no sir no sir the beauty is always at the end of it when you start out with God brothers and sisters you must trust him pray one minute and say Lord kill unbelief your ministry will depend on his word to grow your business stop harassing people to bless you give you money support you please believe in the name of the Lord and let him trust you hallelujah so he told Abraham told Abraham Abraham this is the deal I know you don't know me I'm not the idol you are worshipping leave these people let's go the Bible says while he was going Lot went with him followed him several things started happening in his life and he said look let's separate and he was on his way going 
no child do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child you have only waited two years and nobody rests again Lord you promised me that my husband is coming 2015 what happened with that vision that I saw that he has not landed till now you have prayed you have sown seed you see that's what you see people you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see where is my husband where is my breakthrough and God says look wait thou on me I will bring my word to pass and no 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 oh God look I need time is his age is not on my side how old are you are you learning something the price of trust trust is hard work let me tell you something about trusting God there are times you will ask him questions he will not answer you will ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer but he will never answer you on the matter that's God for you this is the God I serve you will counsel someone now and hear him expressly and counsel the person and say my God and say Lord I've been talking to you about this issue of my family then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and i'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet every time god is keeping quiet he's watching you <sighs> every time god is silent i want you to know he's watching you you know that song please take it lower my voice I want to sing the song. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. Hannah, where is your child? My child is in my trust. Come in. My child is in my trust. Penina is laughing at me. Don't worry. My child is in my trust. Young man, where is your God? Where are the results? That at your age, nothing is working. You are making it look like serving God is a mockery. Don't worry. There are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense. Then that's when he comes in majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see. But many of us don't trust him. Let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness. This ministry you see by the grace of God is a product of trust. There are some of you who have lost things, lost loved ones, against the prophecy God told you, keep trusting. Are we together? Keep trusting. Keep trusting. Because when you hold on and trust him, overnight, he will route your breakthrough truth to another way that you never thought possible. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit tonight. Because there are people here. This your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven. You must learn to smile in the midst of the storm. It's a sign that you trust Him. There is nothing happening to you today that is new. Apostles have not eaten. There was a time in the Bible women were eating their children. You are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this, our baby, and eat. Do you know what the Bible says? Can a mother forget a suckling child? Two women ate one child. What hunger. Then it was a turn to eat the child of the other one. And then the other one said, no, no, no. And the other woman said, not so. And they met a prophet of God. And he said, by this time, tomorrow. Is the training that takes time 
the manifestation happens overnight don't ever call god jehovah sharp sharp during training you are joking sharp 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 is during manifestation not training this foolishness that flies around the body of the body of christ that is making us fools we want everything today once there is a little delay people say you don't have faith be careful many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit i've done a teaching here called the furnace of affliction many people are, are, are talking their nonsense let, let me tell you i'm old enough to know what speed and process is the path to the throne is the cross you will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne if what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross start running away because that's not a throne satan wanted jesus to dodge the cross and get to the throne jesus said not so there is a protocol so brothers and sisters when you are carrying your cross like jesus and they are saying physician heal thyself you healed others you raise others what is wrong with you now don't answer them jesus didn't open his mouth wasting his time he just continued carrying his destiny are we together now because let me tell you brothers and sisters behind every glory there is a story you are writing your story now don't be ashamed of it keep trusting don't be ashamed that you did it and lie no people get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ah. Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why I will lift up my voice and sing yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, don't rush seasons in your life. What you are running away from today, you will miss it tomorrow. What you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Don't run away from your pain. Carry the cross. Pay the price. Pay it honorably. Don't tell lies. I cannot afford Gary now. It doesn't mean I'm irresponsible. I'm a tighter. I trust God. I'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness. There are so many packaging and lies you borrow hundred thousand buy a shoe buy hair buy a shirt buy suit buy bible buy ipad and say i'm in ministry or okay? god walk it slowly you may you may take pap for one week don't be ashamed if a visitor wants to visit you don't beg your friend to go to his house and say that's my house don't be ashamed of your father your father is a carpenter your father is an iron bender <coughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad don't ever don't be ashamed of your pain it is what validates your testimony tomorrow when you rise and people say you faked it someone say i knew him oh i knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking gary rejoice not over me my enemy christians hear me I know that you watch those who were your classmates they are going and God is saying wait back don't don't cry don't ever find yourself crying because one step with his voice will over it will give you 10 years result overnight many people will insult me for what I'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path but that's the path to the throne that's where we follow to be where we are today Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Stop this life of lies 
and packaging. No, the word is working. Whether you see results or not, if you are sick, go to the hospital with honor. The healing ministry is still on your head. It will come, it will manifest. God told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations and three years into the ministry you have 20 members don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people why fake what will eventually be real Lord I trust you oh I trust you I trust you I trust you and I rejoice I'm not ashamed of my pain I'm not ashamed of where I am if all I can take today is Gary, I take it with honor and pride. If you visit me, you will join me taking that Gary. If you think you are too big, no problem. I honor you, but don't rush my seasons. Let me go through it. Let me go through it. I know we started ministry together. Now you have 1,000 members. I have 10 members. Our anointings are not the same. The higher the anointing, the deeper the call. The higher the anointing, the more, the greater the weight. unhealthy comparison all kinds of things destroying the body of Christ when you want a genuine anointing you must be ready to dig deep you must be ready to dig deep there are times God will tell other come to sin other ladies will be moving and God will say you stay back and you say God you have started with me again God says just walk with me see let me tell you if your work with God does not cause you to ask questions, you are not working with him. Because you, you walk with God one day and say, God, what is this? Then he keeps quiet. You are reaching your breaking point. Because a day will come, you say, Lord, whether you ever bless me again or not, since I've come this far, I've, there's a way you enter fire, it burns you, there's nothing to burn again. What made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today. That's spiritual maturity. That's why you see men, somebody persecutes you and says, Pastor Alpha is not it. He's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it. You have sat in that fire long enough. That fire has roasted every flesh. There's nothing left there again. This overconsciousness, the need to explain yourself is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence. Many people see manifestations like this, like what is happening. They desire it. They put their hand on their head and then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you pay for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, I know you love yourselves but God will isolate you and put you it's amazing a husband and his wife can be married but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves that's the dealings of God that's why you must be sensitive that's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons a time will happen you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor don't think he's stupid it's not depression it's a season even him he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him and women like knowing my husband what is it that i'm not cooking well for he says look you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace just stay there when i win i will let you know and the man says this is the valley of the shadow of death I can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there and you see him wake up time to eat a delicious meal he just turns that plate upside down and there's no appetite listen the training of a spiritual man is hard this is why you talk about them in the secret God will punish you in the open you don't know what a, it's a covenant pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice for every time you cry and still trust him it's a covenant you are entering with him you may not know for every time he did not show up and people say where is your god 
and you frown back in shame and say lord i didn't have an answer for them but you are still my god it's a covenant you are entering somebody insults that altar is a joke i taught you on altars last week no sir that's why when you hear certain men of god talk you think he's pride you may not respect them but respect the blood on their altar because there is blood there god will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years no sir you don't like tonight's message it doesn't look very nice i show you the making of spiritual people you want fruitfulness it's not just a key point a b c d i'm leading you some of you i'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season god said it's your year of triumph welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start it's not a cause listen listen hold on there is a difference between temptation and trials listen let me correct something here god never tempts people where you see tempt written with respect to god it was an error in translation temptation is a trap trial is a test it's an exam god will never tempt you the goal of temptation is to destroy you the goal of a trial is to build you are we together now when those seasons come do not think it is unusual you want power you want grace you want to prophesy to someone you want to speak over people and let them come to testify brothers and sisters it's not suit and tie it's not designers it's a track record it's blood and tears and pain you want god to give you the wealth of nations overnight it will not happen just by luck everybody say trust <laughs> say trust genesis 17 let's read from verse 1 to 6 thank you darling genesis 17 quickly when abraham was how old 90 years old bible students how was he how old was he when god called him help me 75 90 years old abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing and he was still walking god came and just reminded him hey my god when abraham was 90 years old and nine hundred minus one the lord appeared to abraham and said unto him i am the almighty god walk thou before me and be perfect you are reading to verse six and i will make my covenant between me and thee and i will multiply thee what say fruitfulness i will multiply you after waiting so long i will still do it exceedingly verse three and Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying we are reading to verse 6 as for me behold my covenant is with thee Abraham remember the discussion we had in chapter 12 I came to remind you that it's still in force although your life has not seen it continue don't give up let me tell you how to know God is leading you sometimes in the midst of that fire help will not come it's a reminder you know how an alarm is Tan, 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 tan. I know that fire is roasting you, but just calm down. I'm still alive. God, where are you? I've always been there watching you. So he's reminding Abraham, Thou shalt be a father of many nations. Just an updated translation of Genesis 12. Read on. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called what? Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, verse 6. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Abraham, continue. Abraham, continue. It's been five years, oh God every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away god says i know exactly what i'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and god says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing i can tell you the deal
dealings of God with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to God has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not God's way you will leave that child there that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born it is the giving birth that will bring people to you they won't just come to visit you for nothing except God has not spoken you will see triumph this year forget whatever it is that is happening except the God of heaven has not spoken you will see it happen I trust him I trust him I trust him trust him show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus we want to enter your rest Show us the ancient past Would you lead us along Eternal highway We want to follow the ways of Jesus We want to enter your rest I wish I didn't have to preach this today I wish I could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness is just drop money receive an impartation let it roll you on the ground and all of a sudden listen this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny there tonight there's no male and female if you want to pass through that road you are genderless when it comes to that that deal you won't say reduce the training because I'm a woman there is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit you will pass through. don't let your tears stop you <clears throat> you may cry oh, but continue God is speaking to someone don't let your tears ever stop you don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say I thought you claim you are called and then because of that you now say okay let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people i'm called god didn't send you you are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation you are joining them together to kill yourself no. satan came when jesus was hungry and thirsty and said if you are the son of god turn this stone to bread he had the power to make it happen he said no I don't have to prove it the voice has already declared it with power that I'm the son of God trust 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 submission brokenness then the next step trust please sit down let me give you two more and then we'll pray the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation write it down the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation when you trust God and you begin to walk with him he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation 
brings you into not just an awareness but um how do i put it now it is it's really the word intercourse is the word koinonia a sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware you become an expression of it the spirit of revelation god begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of god you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down on that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation insight insight is very important if you must bear fruit listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you have been reading it you recited it when you were in sunday school but now that you are really in the valley of the shadow of death that scripture means a lot to you i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and the word comes with light I remember the time we gave an instruction to dance i know that many people didn't do it do you know why because there's no need for it in their life you see if i give you touch light in the daytime you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is but if nepa takes light you'll be looking for your phone the slightest light you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it it is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for they won't appreciate it you know growing up in ministry i always wondered why in pastors conferences when a man of god is preaching he can say something simple and you see pastors crying they are usually the ones standing up when a man of god is preaching and someone there is just laughing and say guy this man has energy to be standing up then the person laughing now marries a pastor you see that and after five years of hellfire the next time they go for a conference they say let's wave our hands the person is rolling jo wave your hands to god and say, i can't wave my hands oh god wave my hand is what i do in my room i will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation some of you what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today the holy spirit will store it in a bank it will be after four years huh four years one night you will pant after this message you will find it you will gasp for it you will borrow phones borrow lantern and sit down and listen to it the price of revelation the bible says, buy the truth everybody say the truth is costly say it again the truth is costly yes it will cost you time listen you don't attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you respect to love a thing is to find it desirable to respect a thing is to find it valuable there are two different things you never attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you honor what you respect to love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable an emotional connect but to respect a thing is to find it valuable it's a right for these words are faithful and true i've been a student in the school of revelation this bible you see 
when I'm lying down to sleep is on my bed when I wake up is following me wherever I am. forget how old you are seeing it like this this Bible has I've worked with this Bible for a while and I have found secrets therein secrets that can turn any man to become every word that God spoke concerning him nobody will spoon feed you thank God for devotionals thank God for um, Esau thank God for concordances but brothers and sisters if you want to know God you want to grow in the world you have to sit down this spoon feeding of believers now I, of course I'm, a, I'm, I'm not I'm not against access to devices and things that will help us but there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time I'm too busy I'm too busy then you see your life nose diving they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your Bible only on Friday during koinonia you close it on Friday only to open it on Friday again or on Sunday that's not a good testimony let me tell you you will need to be serious with the Word of God this is like a treasure chest your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing now for joy. I will sing. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your whatever you spend time with you become that thing you spend time in a beer parlor you become a drunkard you don't become a pilot in a beer parlor you spend time in a beer parlor you become you spend time playing games computer games you become a computer game professional you spend time in the farm you become you don't become a doctor you spend time in his presence you become an envoy that's what happens a testament that the word of god is alive spend time in his presence don't say i'm busy doing what god gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i'd like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry pray twice hallelujah psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says they know not please give it to us psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course I want us to look at verse 5 in Amplified. 
if it's possible please give it to us if it's not possible then we'll just go let's look at it i want you to see the way amplified puts it the magistrates and judges know not neither will they understand listen they walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction and then he says all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking please go back to king james verse 6 says have i not said regardless of your state it does not change my prophecy your lack of revelation and understanding robs you but my prophecy still remains the same have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so i have said you are gods but it doesn't mean you will manifest it between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation understanding the working knowledge of the word the epignosis we call it many times god delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are you are going to be working with like tools god delays your lifting to help you understand these laws you don't learn these laws when you are on stage no life is very unforgiving for the unprepared so he delays you a bit and keeps you so that you will learn it you never knew that praise was a weapon you thought it was something they do before messages come and then in that cave of adulam the spirit of revelation comes to you and says look praise is not just about singing songs dancing is not just about moving your body clapping is not just about making sounds and he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit your laughter is a mystery in the spirit and all of a sudden you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of god tells you laugh now because you know this law you will not think you are you are you are you are mad you will laugh do you know in psalm 2 let me show you something about laughter laughter is a mystery the irony is that every time god wants to judge he laughs before he starts judgment psalm 2 give it to us why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing next verse the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us verse 4 he that seated in the heavens shall do what help me shall do what if we ask promise come if i ask promise to stand here and i say promise talk to us and all of us start laughing at him i mean real laugh some of you the way you laugh if somebody he can even cry just watching you laugh now imagine all of us keep laughing at him what do you think will happen to him let me tell you something about laughter laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil it's a it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know the bible says, rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice when you see people under the anointing you see them laughing you know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing they are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves they are cleaning their powder and they are, they are instead of them to rejoice whatever made the holy ghost to make you laugh don't you think it's a good thing because when god laughs start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking 
this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders it's a ministry where as you are speaking there is a grace for performance it's a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of God are we together now I'm explaining it to you so you see she's not the only person who will laugh you'll see people laugh all around but it is by the spirit you can't sit down and be laughing like this that's a beautiful lady if she should watch herself laughing like that she will stop so this is by the spirit it's all right let's let's continue after laughing after laughing what do you think you will do then she shall speak to them in what so that laughter was not just because he's happy he's laughing at what he as a as a principle before you know how somebody's about to beat you <laughs> let me just smile that's what god is doing there it's in your bible i'm showing you mysteries mysteries that all, that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression ask doctors is the absence of laughter when two people are fighting what's the first thing that disappears not love laughter laughter so you turn your way i turn my way and the devil is happy but all of a sudden you see your result or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people and your name is on the list we have been eyeing you we are hoping to drive you and now that we are found and you just tell him god bless you sir you say I, i'm talking and you are still smiling no no i'm not smiling at you sir i'm just god is faithful i'm smiling because i know my god is alive not a sarcastic laugh but a laugh in confidence a brother comes and said i've changed my mind i will marry you again and it's okay god be the glory you can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes just do it it's a mystery it's not about i feel like you are engaging a mystery when you tight you don't feel like you are moved by that revelation listen there are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing the bible says, a merry heart a merry heart not just a merry mouth not just a merry faith your heart can laugh too your heart can be happy and it will show i'm not talking of this clownish thing you can be happy the joy of the lord this depression that many of us are carrying you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny you never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling god is alive two of us can't be awake if he's awake i sleep And then judgment follows immediately there are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you and laugh before God and say Lord I've cried but I won't cry again and laugh before him switch to dancing switch to praise musician or not if you cannot sing find this high evil praise high evil praise those people did not produce that album for money you, you you see the consecration in their lives you know they meant it the, the the scriptures they quote before the song starts that's that's called warfare praise don't let people tell you there is no such thing right psalms 149 let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands there is a warfare dimension of praise when all else fails switch to praise dance your life and turn every hell around the same way Yoruba people dance before a rich man they play drums and dance he wants to enter his car they call his name and shake their head and dance before you know it he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for was it not a lady that danced before Herod what is it about her dance she danced before Herod and removed the head of a prophet what is troubling you is not a prophet. Can I remove the head? Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, You claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith. But why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oyedeko said, He danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. 
do you use a weapon just because you like it you use it for efficiency knowledge of the principles of the kingdom so you know what to do your rent is expiring that's not the time to pray wrong spiritual approach no it's too late you would have been praying since you saw the signal you have been having a lot of dreams the moment it is quarter to shape don't pray dance rejoice please learn this thing i'm teaching you the weapons of war he said with wise counsel make war quarter to shame get one koinonia message get one worship team people come and give them honorarium let them record something and sing and dance put it in your pocket if all your phone has is movies and games you are not ready for life you must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes you know the song already you bring it out hallelujah and you watch battles turn around overnight overnight battles turn around overnight listen you want to be fruitful the longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge spiritual intelligence knowledge you have trusted god you are humble but let me tell you the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester you see that it's a product of many things god's course is not three credit load it is your desire that can turn it into three credit six credit you can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class and the next class is two years you stay there god's classes is not like a an exact period of three three months no way you can be two years in a class he will give you break then you do another elective and call you back not to a higher cost the same cost let's continue lord i thought we finished no we finished what let's continue but when you are done you will see the value of that thing for a student you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during exam and make up in the school of the spirit you miss one class that class you have missed will show in your destiny that lecture you did not attend the floor will be very clear in your destiny. God's, God's dossier for attendance must be 100%. Even if you have graduated and you have 89%, you must complete that remaining. That's why some of you will be embarrassed. That after many years, you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic. Just walk with him. Walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you. You think that you have finished the issue of the flesh. And then one day as a great man of God, God calls you for a fresh lecture. And the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh. And you start again. Don't fight him. Be humble and stay. Say, Lord, help me. You thought you have overcome loss for money. And then after 20 years of ministry, God asks you to go for a retreat. And you don't talk about pride, whatever. God says, I just want to kill the influence of mammon. And he said, Lord, I thought when I started with you, he said, we didn't finish that course. I only gave you a break. Or you stop attending lectures. But now that you are ready to come back, you don't do superstar with God. If you miss lectures for 10 years, the day you meet with God again, you go back and continue from where you started. Now, men don't expect you to go back. This is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again someone was a secular for instance a secular musician are we together now and then the guy gets born again and then you bring him to church and he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life then you make him music director no way if he comes to church he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know god that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impart spirituality hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when god gives the green light look at david david was in the wilderness 
and God kept training him with the sleep the moment it was time to destroy Goliath he went with confidence when you shake in the time of battle it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals are we together now and he defeated Goliath effortlessly my personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that I will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill God's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that I coined out that's the name of the system of God's operation he operates in mysteries Matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 11 it has been given to you we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know someone looks at you and says promise you will never rise in this life that person is not just making an empty statement that person is speaking on the strength of something maybe divination you don't just stand and say it will never happen it will happen until you have a mystery an understanding something you know that can oppose it are we together now yes if i push this guy he should fall down but if he's stronger than me he can create another force that will resist whatever i'm trying to do then he will stand you don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of christ if you know you have power come and kill us in the village and you hear silence no answer the only thing you see is that after one week the only thing you can do is to see you can't talk you can't stand you can't stand up you can't walk that was the answer from the realm of the spirit to you and saying be careful make sure you see god before you stand before pharaoh but by the grace of god with the training you are receiving here let me tell you i pity whoever rises against you one dance one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of god will crumble that person to his knees i tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithe and say lord i am a titan i am a titer i stand as a family we are titers my business is a tithing business devourer i rebuke you and satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a titer and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain what do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you do you know there is something you can engage please everybody say after me excuse me say after me in the name of jesus what i need to do in the face of danger in the face of challenges i receive access to it it is costly to stand stupefied watching life not knowing what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do jesus himself knew what to do you find out that you've been married six months People are asking you, Madam, we are not seeing anything. Don't worry. Don't start getting angry and saying, what is your business? No. Just say, Lord, I give you thanks. One year, two years, three years, it looks like no child is coming. Don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying, they are laughing at me. No. Father, I give you praise. Start practicing the law of honor. You see, Pastor Alpha and his wife and their child. What do this child want? Oh, this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change I told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging 
some of us have been sitting waiting if you are waiting to know what to do then that's wise if you are waiting for things to change apostle nobody is coming to marry me engage engage do something engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere <laughs> to engage means find someone who has married find a family find one mother somewhere you see our mothers all around one day you can find a mother package five for life package something wrap her and say mommy please I see that you are married with seven children they are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life I've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be treating for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may God bless you I bless you I remember it was Pastor Corey de Komaya that was sharing a story he has twins and um, um, was Bishop Aremu of Living Faith you know I think they have twins too and one time his wife was with the wife of Bishop Aremu and then she looked at her and said you self uh -uh, you've not given birth to you've not given birth again and she said mommy no and she took her veil and stoned her with it said take twins job like joke that's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are carriers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that where, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira i don't know how one tier how much one tier of gari is you buy it buy lollipop for the children you don't even have to tell them that's why you came just like boy take once they open your lollipop and they're taking start rejoicing they are engaging in mystery Ay. brothers and sisters those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain you enter a place to start a ministry nobody knows you you are a young minister find the greatest ministry there orthodox or pentecostal quietly go and worship with them whether you believe what they are saying or not sit down under that atmosphere when you worship with them try to see if you can gain access to the man of god if you cannot put a small seed and so that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you are a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is it's a lie let me tell you the truth there are people look at me i say it with all humility there are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever it will never return till jesus comes make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling there are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials don't sit down and say i'm we are all young people we're not i'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper god's way very few people in the kingdom prosper God's way. So when they hear people like us talking like this, they think we are just talking nonsense. There is a way God grants you prosperity that no devil, no gate of hell will turn it around. Not up today, 
down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we're going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um take the last part but then even if we stop here that's all right access to light the mysteries of the kingdom the secrets of champions there are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth strange results i have seen people with a grace nothing finishes in their hands they may not like promise was saying when he was raising the offering they may not be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing i'll talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace some things cannot be taught they are received but it's not just general anointing holy spirit come <clears throat> is locating people who are carriers of these dimensions it must be working for somebody close to you have the humility to see it a gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car i said really i said so what are you doing about it and he said he's saving i laughed i said that means you are not going to buy a car forever till jesus comes you see a young man and ask him you want to buy a land so what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm planning. Uh, for now, I have 100,000. You don't buy land by saving. You buy land through favor. Whatever God gives you is not what you keep to buy land. It's what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level. Now, many mainstream people, again, are going to insult me for this thing. And don't forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people. But I tell you this, with the integrity of God, psalm 45 44 verse 3 give us psalm 44 verse 3 let me show you how to acquire if god wants to give you grace god wants to give you land this is how it comes read if you're a christian want to read by their own sword uh-huh neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor this is how it happens this is how it happens there are graces you must tap into you don't have by default the baptism of the holy spirit will not bring those graces for you when you have revelation Part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern. Dr. Mike Mudo calls it wisdom. The ability to discern difference. Ah, I've been a roommate with promise. And I've noticed that my job pays more than his job. But he's happier, healthier with a lot of money. It's in my presence. I watch people bringing favor. It's a sign that there is a grace operating. Let me tell you something. It may be your husband. It may be your wife. It will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come Marcelina, if Marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor i can stand as an arrogant man of god preaching with no favor but through knowledge i want to be fruitful remember i want results i'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness I will discern how do you discern observation observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of God a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well there is a grace you are about to get married as a young couple go and meet them kneel down help her make pepper soup do whatever you do 
mommy bless us. You say, ah, no, don't worry, my children. Don't allow all that greeting to distract you. Kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head. And you, you can sow into her life. You can say, Marcelina, sorry. Let me just help you and worship you. Ah, no, I won't do this. You are a great woman of God. No. no, even if you are the person that got that person born again, with respect to what you want to receive, you are the lesser. So you must humble yourself to receive. Are we together? And you tap into that grace and that mantle lands on your head. You start producing extraordinary results. I'm like a fisherman. I know graces that are needed and where they are found. And when, I, when I'm pursuing a grace, I'm not embarrassed. That's what took me to Canaan land. To go and meet Bishop Oyedeko. That's what took me to Joss. To go and meet Renard Bonke. You, you fish unashamedly. You don't receive impartation from colleagues. Promise, promise. We are... We are uh, I remember when we were in secondary school. Can you bless me? I'm seeing something working in your life. What's it? Can you imagine... <laughs> Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize what he was doing. Praise God. There are people who are very foolish. Some of you, your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level. But you have not discerned it. You pass them every time. Mommy, I'm going for fellowship. May God help you. And she keeps wondering. When she was your age, 20 men were looking for her. You are almost twice her age. Nobody is coming. Tap. Tap into it. Somebody who lives in your neighborhood. All he has is primary school certificate. Yet in your presence. You are, you are joining others to say his money is, is charm. Because naysayers always find explanations. Once they see someone blessed. They have to find something and say, that thing, eh? you see, eh, Jimmy, just leave that guy. That guy is, uh, is a, there is a spirit. Don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there, there are spirits all around. This is the end time. Be careful. Be careful. Don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings. When you find out that there is a grace, it doesn't have to be from a high man of God. Some of you this night, if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day in the midst of that fight there is a grace tap into it be the one to cook the food tomorrow what's the occasion i noticed three of you in this room there is the hand of god on your life sir i notice there is no week that passes without you being favored i want to tap into it. you may not have money you have polish you can polish his shoe you don't have money you have soap you can wash find one socks whether it's clean or not soak it again and wash it lord this i'm washing every nonsense out of my life results results your father may be a harsh man your mother may be a harsh man but you have never seen them beg for bread there are results in that area look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it. There are many people who want crowds. Look for mission agencies around. There are mission agencies. There are orphanages. You want God to make your children correct. That their brains will be working well. Find an orphanage. Buy one bag of rice. Drag it there. And meet them. The children may not tell you thank you. They may not even recognize you. You are not doing it just for that tap into it. i'm showing you how i live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing it's like a charm that has called all the blessings they start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves the principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life 
listen if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job start engaging mysteries now otherwise you will never get one please hear me are we together especially for brothers i'm waiting for a job you will wait forever engage mysteries if you don't know ask questions you want to start to start a business all you have is capital and a brain you are going to lose let me advise you don't even waste your time to start there are spiritual things we engage go and listen to my message spiritual intelligence settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start anytime you are in trouble don't start running to meet people physically settle it in the secret place you are in trouble the landlord is about to come and throw you out there is trouble your parents are going to court leave all those those things are shadows enter the secret place and correct it if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of god i've taught you about the mercy of god the mercy of god will turn is is god's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 cgpa 4.7 you think these things are just guesswork no you engage mysteries we're going to pray our time is gone but i want you to cry for fruitfulness and i want you to cry for discernment discernment to know how to tap into graces don't sit down and be barren i've taught you brokenness i've taught you humility i've taught you trust i've taught you revelation you must come around the knowledge of the mysteries and then i've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the god of heaven Pray. Hallelujah. Just three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord supernatural supply of grace to trust you i will never doubt you again whether i understand what you are doing or not i banish complaint from my life i banish grumbling from my life lift your voice and pray supernatural grace to trust pray Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. She na malana manana bos. Le na na masi na na. She na na na. She na na masi braga na malana malana na na na. I want to be extraordinarily fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. Shabrakata koso do paka shabraga na malana ba. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, the mysteries I need to know in this season for the next level of my results. Show me. Give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Show me, show me, open my eyes, make a parado kapraska dabalakaya, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Show me the mysteries of wealth, show me the mysteries of increase. Show me the mysteries of fruitfulness. 
the mysteries of restoration, the mysteries of peace. Show me the key, oh God, to making things work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, look up. Let me tell you sincerely, and I want to tell you this with all humility. Most of the graces you will need to produce the results that you need are available in this house. It's just that many of us have not had the discernment to tap. I'd like you to cry to God and say the grace that is deficient in my life that is responsible for this stagnation. I open up my spirit through honor. I open up my spirit through honor. Lift your voice. Pray this with wisdom. The grace for the gift of man. The ministry of helpers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I know that our time is gone, but I want us to pray. Listen, I want you to know that this house is a house of mantles. This house is a house of strange graces. You know, just last week the Lord did something in my life that He did something in my life that almost brought tears. I said, God, what is this? What is this? What are you doing to me? And the Lord spoke to my ears and said, I would do it to anybody who understands this. It's not the individual that is making it happen. Is what is on you that is producing it. Listen, I want you to pray before I pray for you. Don't be arrogant. There is something deficient in your life that can cheaply bring you to seasons of results. You have seen it work in this life. You have seen it work in this place. Lift your voice and cry from your heart and say, Lord, I must tap into it. Lift your voice and pray. on Sunday and every time these seasons come usually I don't think of what people do for me I just think of the faithfulness of God in my life and I kept thinking meditating all through this week and 
I just felt that if there is anything I can do to the body of Christ is to pray for you. You have prayed for me, but I want to pray for you. There are things I carry. I've seen very few people carry it and I don't know why. You don't have to kneel down to stand. I want you to believe it. I have seen certain things in my life and I've seen very few people and it has pained me because these things are for the taking. There are dimensions of graces. But this, this pride, please help me to this one. This pride, honestly, brothers and sisters, hear me. If you believe in this prayer that I'm praying for you, it will change your life. This thing you see is an election of grace. I may be a young man, but there is an ancient mystery on this person you see. I want you to believe it. You have taken all the shame. You've taken all disappointments. You've taken all the pain. You've taken all my sorrows. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my sufferings. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my weakness. Nina Yimaka. Don't, don't sing. I'm praying for you. You've taken all my sadness. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my poverty. You've taken all my dishonor. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my struggles. You have made them yours. You have made them yours. You've taken all my sadness. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my sorrow. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my struggles. You've taken all my fears. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my mountains. You've taken all those mountains. You've taken all my mountains. I give you, I give you, I give you my highest praise. I give you, I give you, Lord, for everything you've done in my life. Lord, I give you, I give you, I give you. My highest praise I give you I pray for you The power to prosper There is such a grace Called the anointing To prosper I stand under this apostolic And prophetic mantle You have been part of this ministry You have been part of this vision from the depth of my spirit i release that mantle on your life now take it now take it now the power to prosper the power to prosper the power to prosper the power to prosper i release it from the depth of my spirit The Lord has given me uncommon honor and influence. Honor is a mantle. It can be put on people. I decree and declare that everyone connected with this vision, everyone connected with this grace right now, as I speak, may that mantle of honor practically let it land on your life now. Take it now. Strength, honor, grace for influence. I know at 
time is gone but just pay attention you are receiving something that will change your life I decree and declare there is no time in my life where I have needed helpers and men did not rise there is a grace that can bring helpers from anywhere I prophesy to you let help us start appearing in your destiny from today. Let help us start appearing from your, in your destiny from today. Hallelujah. I am a product of encounters. Both the ones I prayed for and the ones I did not pray for. Encounters have brought me strange graces encounters of angels encounters with the realm of the spirit i open you up to a water in the realm of the spirit begin to have encounters from today receive visitations receive visitations receive visitations visitations of angels visitations of the spirit visitations in visions visitations in dreams May they bring you scriptures. May they bring you revelations. Listen. A lot of the impartations I've received have come to me in visions. Where literally in visions, I receive impartations. I have met with the saints the spirits of just men made this is not diabolism i have received from men in the flesh but i've received from men in the spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit every mantle every grace that must make the supernatural begin to work in your life receive it right now in the name of jesus everyone in ministry here from today i launch your ministry to a realm of strange signs and wonders strange signs and wonders strange signs a performance a performance of the world hallelujah i pray for everyone here called into the area of business called into the area of finances or anyone trusting God to lift you there is a grace that establishes men I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ between now and the next 60 days rise to a level you have never seen in your life rise to a level you have never seen in your life hallelujah listen listen I've shared with you the story I don't talk too much about myself hallelujah it was last year right here in three weeks god gave me a gold mine in three weeks god gave me a gold mine 18.7 hectares of a gold mine i never saw it once till i got it there is a grace that empowers men you better believe it i stand here tonight in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you enter into prepared blessings Enter into prepared blessings. Enter into prepared blessings. Enter into prepared blessings. Beyond your certificate, enter into prepared blessings. Beyond your job, enter into prepared blessings. One of the things I've seen in my life is supernatural defense and protection. There are many of you, the moment you are in trouble, nobody arises to help you. You sit there, you fight alone and die alone. Are we together now? I want to pray for you. This one, I've not seen many people walk in that grace. There is a grace that immunes you from trouble. We live in a wicked world. You don't have to look for anybody's trouble. Someone just comes and makes nonsense out of your life. Nobody to speak for you. I pray for you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ the God of Israel who has defended me and defended this ministry from today I don't know what brings shame to your life I create a wall of defense around you receive that grace from today in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you quarter to shame may help arise for you the last prayer I'm going to pray for you is for speed some of us are too slow and it's not just by God something that will take you two days will take you six months it's not a testimony again I want to prophesy speed it must land on someone it may not come on everybody but Lord God I pray in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I'm praying may somebody here carry this mantle of speed in the name of Jesus speed of performance speed of performance speed of performance speed of performance hear me whoever fights you in the name of Jesus the God that I serve that person goes down instantly from today I don't know what has left your life you are crying till now because it looks like when you miss that thing, you miss everything. Jacob's kata, mantes calabria takozosia, jebreze sutos kobaria takata, ebreze sekete kete kere kete, rekoto shopo koto, ebratas kalapa shadia, mareke tos kote sekete kete, ebreto koto pere kete. Everything that left your life in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy I call it back to your life right now I call it back to your life right now I call it back to your life right now Hallelujah and for everyone who is a worker in this ministry in the name of Jesus I decree to you let this be the season of extraordinary results in your life. You are a worker in this ministry. I put that anointing on your life. You are a worker in this ministry. I put it doesn't matter whether prayer department, worship team, ushering, whatever. I decree and declare. May this grace speak bodily now. Bodily now. Bodily now. Let it answer now to your life. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. I want, us to, I want us to take that. Come back to us. I just want us to take that part. It really struck me. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. There are many cups that can run dry. But Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. 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 Father, I've come tonight.
because you are that cup that will not run dry. Fill me. Zapa kota shala priyata katos kaliyata. The cup that doesn't run dry. Infinite in wisdom. Zabros kalabaniya shada balakata. Skabala da balato sapriyanda kastala badika to shabendi getikai. Infinite in wisdom. Infinite in wisdom. Layer after layer, truth upon truth. Manda kapaka to sabra katos kalabriyanda katas kavranda gata. No man exhausts your wisdom. Infinite in wisdom. to transform us you are anointed to empower us this is koinonia and lord we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you for the privilege of positioning ourselves through alignment for encounters that you will transform us tonight this is our prayer we ask oh god that our minds be enlightened let your light come bless lift change and take us to dimensions we never dreamt possible we believe this and that's why we are here spirit of the living god we give you unrestrained access to our minds transform us in the name of jesus christ amen god bless you please be seated thank you so much for the many people please if, if they if they are comfortable standing let them stand um, it's going to be a whole lot of let's see how it goes if they get too tired, I'm sure outside will be cold and wet. But if we can get a few of them there, then uh, that would be fine. But um, I know it's cold. It's the season. And um, better days are coming. The day will come when it is raining, you will not even know. Oh, yes. Enjoy the process. Never pity yourself on your way to greatness. Enjoy every process. Be featured on the way so that you will have a story to tell. Let it not be that it was when everybody arrived that you came so that you will have a story too. And say one day, whilst listening to the word of God, I was standing outside cold and you look at your children and say it was that diligence that brought about the blessings we have today hallelujah i have learned never to be embarrassed for as long as i know i am on the path to greatness follow it in the rain the sun in convenience and in inconvenience follow it diligently and be proud of your pursuit and sacrifices nobody wins the olympic by mistake life is intentional progress is intentional it will cost you. It has never been a secret. The cost dimension of life is not a secret. It's a price that is obvious. Everyone knows that to be great, there will be sacrifices. There will be seasons of constraint. Only a fool expects results without process. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing. We are proud of where you are leading us. And Lord, we ask for grace to learn to appreciate and to access the keys that will help us rise. In the name of Jesus. I've been thinking about tonight's meeting. Um, I think about all the meetings. But tonight's meeting struck me because um, every once in a while the Holy Spirit just gives me an opportunity to reminisce on all the teachings that have come. Um, and I submit to us in this house that God has granted us access to many many teachings this year alone we have been exposed to several teachings 
and you see the goal of these teachings these teachings are informations they are revelations that we are supposed to receive we are supposed to believe we are supposed to engage them and then watch them produce results in our lives and lift us from one dimension to the other hallelujah the goal of revelation is the transformation that it brings so that your life becomes an epistle you become a testimony that god did not lie in that area and truly it takes a while for the truth to settle in us and produce the desired result but we must endure hearing once learning once knowing once does not get the job done we must immerse ourselves it's from the word baptizo baptism we must immerse ourselves in this truth until we are literally possessed by them and then they will produce undeniable results in our lives proverbs chapter 4 there's a song in my spirit let praises rise from the inside you know the song from the inside help me may you delight very powerful song in the inside in the inside help me help me instruction of a father and attend to no understanding we're reading down to verse 9 for i give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law verse 3 for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother for he taught me also and said unto me let thine heart retain my words keep my commands and leave five get wisdom get understanding although it is so volatile but forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth forsake her not and she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all your getting get understanding exalt her esteem her place value on her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee praise the Lord I am amazed at what the wisdom of God can do in the life of an individual an organization a church a ministry I am awed 
while I was coming I was talking to one of the protocol persons who was with me and I was just nodding my head and I told him I said the wisdom of God we desperately desperately need the wisdom of God you see the Bible says there is a way please listen carefully there is a way that seemeth right unto a man there is a way that culture proposes and says men walk in it there is a way that intellectualism sophia human wisdom experience are we together now encapsulated in education science whatever it is the logic of life there is a way that it leads you there is a way that society leads you to approach life there is a way your instinct that is a derivative of the unrenewed mind leads you but the bible says listen carefully it says the end thereof are the ways of death our society is full of people guessing their ways our society is full of people hoping they are right our society is full of people imagining that they will make it young people fathers mothers leaders largely walking in confusion hoping that we understand what we are doing Do you know sometimes when i stand and i look at people i just feel like crying because i'm tempted to ask the question truly speaking who did this to us at what point did the confusion start are we together i have been passionate and you would have noticed that i i discovered that we have done well in this house with respect to exposing us to encounters by god's grace teachings have come teachings after teachings helping us to understand the person the ministry of the holy spirit we have seen encounters we have seen the power of god we have seen the glory of god but at the start of this year when the lord told me it was our year of triumph i took out time to take a little inventory and i found out that um, although god had helped us we were lacking grossly in the understanding of the systems of the kingdom we were doing well in terms of encounters the love for god passion prioritizing god but i knew that we needed to step up our understanding otherwise frustration will be inevitable it is painful to love god and still fail did you hear what i said it is it is justifiable to to hate to fail when you hate god and fail you say after all i'm not serious but when you love god a dear lady asked me a question day before yesterday i think and she said apostle are there good men i'm not teaching on, on men are there good men again and i said are you kidding of course they are and she said my mother was a good woman why is her life this way and it struck me again see let me tell you this you never never guess your way to greatness you never get your way to guess your way to peace the older you become it does not equate to the wiser you become there are 70 80 90 year old people remember we are conditioned environmentally that means that somebody mentored somebody who mentored somebody who mentored somebody who went to a school and submitted himself to a teacher's view who mentored somebody who later married somebody who mentored some children we our society is a chain of mentorship largely a communication of informations that are unscriptural and inaccurate are we together this is a very uncomfortable truth but we have to admit it because our lives and our results show that we obviously are missing it somewhere let me challenge us a bit look at your finances you will agree with me that something is missing somewhere look at your family life married or not if you're married look at your family why the fight why the quarrel it gets worse if both of you are christians look at the children why are they unruly why are they indisciplined how about your job 
look at the retrogression in our lives are we together now and do you know what most people will say this is what we say i don't know what i don't know why things are not working i've taught you here and i will drum it until it enters your spirit nothing works by itself nothing works by itself marriage does not work by itself spiritual life does not work by itself becoming blessed and wealthy does not work by itself becoming employed becoming responsible does not work by itself becoming a virtuous lady becoming a responsible man does not work by itself brothers and sisters growing spiritually does not work by itself becoming transformed does not work by itself everything in life must be engaged with wisdom to produce are we together now our confusion in life is because our intentions are not our results what we desire is not what we see so we desire a particular outcome but certain other outcomes keep happening and they keep repeating themselves regardless of the strategies we are trying ask any family represented here they will tell you we are tired of suffering we are tired of argument we are tired of pain can't we live in peace then they hold a meeting and say let's live in peace they all agree two days later everybody has gone haywire do you know why because the issue is not counseling the issue is the bankruptcy of certain informations our unwillingness to admit that time does not give knowledge please can you just flow just play something to flow hallelujah time does not impart knowledge time never never decides anything time only reveals I can go on my knees tonight and beg every one of you listening to me here listening online we are not acting on stage this thing is not a drama we are trying to act called ministry we are talking about transforming people there there is an exact formula you have to understand this there is a programming society has programmed our minds Africa has been programmed in a certain way demons have worked with informations for years and decades they have come from culture to culture from university to university from college to college from school to school they have indoctrinated men into thinking and understanding life in a particular way that is producing unfavorable outcomes listen pain will never produce change it only reveals the need for change That you are going through an unfavorable situation does not mean it will change that you are crying and say oh god will you not wipe my tears it may provoke the mercy of god but every time god wants to show you mercy he does two things he sends his word and he sends men the solution to our problems our challenges the doors we trust and hope to open are shrouded in men and informations you reject men you reject truth you will die it says love me proverbs chapter 4 paraphrasing right that i will preserve you i will glorify you i will put an ornament of glory upon you please listen to me the hardest person the hardest person to ever help is the man and the woman who is resistant to change the moment an individual holds on to an old idea an old information whether theologically established philosophically established educationally established it doesn't matter what the basis is for as long as you are unwilling to open up your mind for the vetting and the probing of the spirit if per adventure the information you have carried on through your life is wrong there is nothing embarrassing about discovering that you have believed a lie you can change there is always time for a meek and a humble person who will say look i believe there has to be why am i a bad father begging and begging and 50 years we are still staying in a rented apartment i love god something is wrong why is there no favor in my life 
everything I lay my hands to do doesn't work. Listen, listen. This is not the issue of man of God pray for me. This is the issue of submitting yourself to say I know that I am missing something. Because your life is producing a result. It's just that it's a result you don't want. If your life were not producing pain is a result. Failure is a result. It means you are activating certain principles unknowingly. Limitations are results. Am I blessing you tonight? Let's not act as if God is so wicked and cannot help us and cannot change us and cannot lift us. Hear me, your life and my life is at the mercy of our understanding of the systems of the kingdom. Provided we submit ourselves to understand it, I give you a guarantee your light will come. But for as long as we sit down and allow demons to build fortification, along our wrong thinking our wrong mindset we argue and insult and move in pride especially for we the men because you see men our that sense of authority and dominion sometimes the false version of it has eaten us up the fact that we have accessed certain information for years does not mean it is valid a whole nation can be wrong that an information is old does not make it right it's been there but it's not right are we together our society is full of needless pain and sorrow sorrow upon sorrow there are families today that cannot live in peace they love God talk talking some of them are even working in the vineyard of God but the systems of God that have been allocated to make for peace is not there. Divorce rates are soaring. Young people marrying the lifetime of marriage is two years. Lovely people, educated, they love God. Once upon a time, they could not sleep until they talk with themselves. Two years later, they hate themselves. What do you not know? Why do people fail? a family of 10 people nobody ever rises beyond certain barriers we we say demons yes it is the obvious reason but not the only reason something authorized them a door was open to them most of us the demons have been casted yet our lives have not changed because there is an equation that will have to commit us commit our understanding and our participation anybody who is unwilling to listen to this has failed not will fail has failed hallelujah when i understood the systems of god my life changed do you know someone sent me a text today lamenting and languishing on a lot of things in his life you know certain monies he was hoping he can get and he said if i can just get this 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 i will have peace i said no sir no sir you can have peace now peace is a revelation peace is a revelation it is not the product of the arrival or departure of certain factors peace is a revelation you can choose to be frustrated and wrinkle yourself to death our society is full of angry people whose lack of understanding has added to their age young people looking old why because a revelation has programmed them even their bodies they have wrinkled themselves 10 years ahead of their age moving in anger and frustration I came here tonight to challenge us God is not a magician God is not just a miracle worker God is a God of principles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and so God intervenes supernaturally to correct it a principle is a sign that things are working as designed are we together now yes every one of us seated here came from a family listen carefully came from a culture and all of our cultures have certain tenets certain understandings foundationally we were indoctrinated with those things as a template for living we have perspectives financially speaking we have perspectives maritally speaking we have perspectives even in our pursuit of godliness we have perspectives 
in the area of parenting we have perspectives in the area of education and orientation we have perspectives in just our sociological living relationships and most of these perspectives most of it was fabricated by men and women who did not it was not a derivative of the ministry of the holy spirit it came as a result of people carving out a a system of relationship based on their pain their hatred their frustration and let me tell you something that you are born again does not transform you automatically it is only the access point for transformation to start being born again means that you are now authorized to legally begin to engage yourself in transformation there is something that we have allowed we have introduced it like a drug in our spirits in our minds that is cancerous is producing outcomes we do not desire so you see a lot of people and they tell you this is what i want but then their lives never produce it because another system is interrupting your desire and compelling a result that is not consistent with your desire see that so every time you come for koinonia know this that your coming for koinonia is a bailout system god is rescuing you some of you god is single-handedly picking you out of a family of 11 people to say look if you people keep praying and doing night vigils you will do it forever the, the spiritual dimension is ready to be corrected but there is a level of partnership with the holy spirit through knowledge through understanding there is something you must engage nobody nobody is born successful even if you are born into a rich family it is not your success the bible says in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it said this book of the law shall not depart this compendium of mysteries this this the, the wisest perspective in all matters let it not depart he said but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently right he said that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein it leaves you with a promise not a suggestion he says then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good there is bad and wicked and foolish success there is good success look at me there is no such thing that god chose one person sam come and said you you will succeed and then chose another person and say you you will fail no way god is very just he created the systems and said anybody that wants to succeed subscribe to it in other words my being successful is not something god just chose to do last week he allocated the pathway the same way when you follow a road the government they, they build the road whoever wants to get to that destination follow it whether a child whether an adult the road does not ask you how old you are provided you are following legally says go you don't go to buy a car and they ask you how old you are no no once you can pay for it it is given to you is that true why are we failing why are things not working in our lives why are we sitting down hoping that one day god will change whereas he has decided you see if the will of god is not known to us if the will of god is not known to us we will keep praying foolish prayers and we'll keep asking as if it is god's pleasure to watch us go through pain and frustration something we do not know is responsible for these pains and these tragedies please give us jeremiah 29 and verse 11 jeremiah 29 and verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you this is god speaking thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you other versions say a future and an expected end a defined end not not an end that let's just be going and we hope no 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 an expected end that means there's something god has for me joshua selman in the blueprint of prophecy he designed that i will become something whether or not i become it is not up to him he has designed it it is my cooperation with him 
that will determine whether I will live the reality of prophecy. There are people God designed to be millionaires. As it is, they have never touched one million. But in the heart, in the loins of prophecy, is their heritage, is their destiny. One of the most deceptive statements in the church is if God wants me, he has the power to make it. It is, it is using the truth to kill. You are using the truth like a knife and turning it to pierce people. To say if God wants it, he will make it. No. There are many things God wants to do that is not yet done on earth. It is his will that all men be saved. There are men still going to hell. The fact that somebody went to hell is a sign that if you don't change, nothing will change. Because if God has people to attend to, he will attend to those going to hell first before the issue of rent. Are we together? Sorry, I'm sure they are working on the sound. If it does go off, then we are going to pray. Is that fine? Promise already gave us. Uh, so I, I think I've said enough for us to pray. For any reason the sound goes off, just fire and pray very seriously and say, Lord, what I've had so far. You see how my life is going. You lay your hands and you pray. Don't laugh, you pray. And say, Father... I know I bear witness with the fact that I am confused as I'm standing now. I don't know my left from my right. I'm just growing older. You need to give me direction and decorum. Hallelujah. Do you know, marriages now are some of the most fearful things. Once you see two people about to get married, the first thing I look is not whether they love themselves. The first thing I look is whether they understand the systems of the kingdom. You just carry a lady, you carry a lady that you want to marry and two of you stand and we say, now what is the name of what you are doing? You say, we love ourselves and uh, we are trusting the Lord to live together. That's wonderful. It's a good starting point. But do you understand the mysteries that have been allocated for living for the next 60 years? Knowing that you will get old, she will get old. Not knowing physically speaking. The things that the future holds do you understand the mysteries what if after your wedding night somebody appears and say you took my wife do you know what to do or will you cry this is what we are talking about if you get married to this wonderful lady now for instance and in the night while you are sleeping you are happy wedding night you danced all through the day and on your wedding night a stranger appears and say well in case you don't know they don't marry anyhow from this family and since you came foolishly i am here do you understand that this one is not love again this is spiritual intelligence because many of us will get up and say ah, honey i had a very bad dream let me it's not just a bad dream your life is about to be wrecked into pieces because we live in an environment that we walk through spiritual intelligence now love took you there understanding keeps you understanding keeps you brothers and sisters don't say i got born again you have watched seven people from your family the highest time they stayed in their marriages were two years what makes you think you will stay more so it, it is true love your wife but much more than that access the keys access the keys are we together what if your wife gets pregnant and you hear a report and they say the body the baby is turning anyhow and is about to kill your wife what mystery do you know that's no longer love what do you know are you hearing what i'm saying when you start building your house and someone comes the next day you come and see the blood of a goat on the demarcate it on the side of your fence you don't know the person who put it but you put it there and then they leave a letter if you add one more block you will die responsible gentleman you went to school but what are you going to do about that situation listen carefully to what i'm telling you those who are those of our parents fathers and mothers here know they they understand what i'm saying is the young people that are just laughing and joking when you rise and become responsible for your life you know that this world is a fierce place it's not a place of joke at all you see a letter written there nobody has spelled in this house in this family what gives you the audacity to say you want to start building a house at 27 they put that blood there as a sign be warned 
can you answer whoever wrote it without seeing him because the person put it and ran away can you carry the block by yourself and drop it and say because of what you said mason we are working day and night ah it's risky to not know how to respond did you hear what i said it's not just dangerous it's risky hear what i'm saying it's risky you go for a wedding and you are dancing and somebody comes to just touch you and hug you and rub all kinds of things on you and go away is there a system of immunity that answers immediately i'm not talking of prayer your life has been equipped already by default that woman touches something and as she's going back headache starts first then the leg stops working and then whatever shrine tells her you made a mistake big mistake you touch somebody who is not just a dancer on a wedding ground there is a warrior quietly seated what do you know that is because of tribalism they look at you and say we are relieving you from your job your wife is not working you are the only one working on account of your faith and integrity because you refuse to bribe are we together they now bring you a sack letter do you know what else to engage so you don't go hungry or will that experience begin the the start of your frustration what do you know and what do you not know this is what i want you to know on earth the days the days i, I was speaking with a jimmy's father-in-law this morning and he was telling me he said kai that during our time it at their time now it was a bit easier and he said during our time now the world is spiritual everything i mean you have to be spiritual about everything literally literally many young people are not spiritual i know you are not spiritual because you do not know what to do brothers and sisters when you return home and you see your father beating your mother boxing her you are a stupid woman you are a witch you are a devil as one who has worked with god do you know what to do or will you stand and say let me separate them sorry and you go back to your room and say god when will you wipe our tears do you know what to engage this this is my assignment this year to to equip you to know what to do that issue of man of god pray for me wonderful but what if the man of god is sleeping because it is only the keeper of israel that doesn't sleep joshua selman sleeps and he can slumber we keep carrying heart pain and say i called you by 2 30 sir you were sleeping of course well, what is the meaning of that of course are we together there is something we do not know we allow evil to step into our families and just destroy people like chickens and we sit down and say god i think you have to do something wonderful submit your prayer request at miracle service but much more than that will you be able to rise in intelligence look at the suffering that ravages families financially and do you know the pain it happen is happening to people who love and fear God this is what makes it painful if I don't love God and I don't fear God whatever I get I have to admit it but when I love God and fear God I serve him truly I serve him faithfully and then all of a sudden nothing works Lord I'm looking for transport to come to church I can't come for koinonia because there is no transport lord i'm looking for my school fees it's only twenty thousand. it can't happen lord my father is about to die i i, we, I just need five thousand for his drugs is it really the will of god to leave you in that pain who taught you is the will of god are we together We have allowed the devil to destroy our lives. 
can i present scenarios right now and ask you what your response will be can i give all of you koinonia right now and say from all you have learned from january till now write the following exam and then i create an imaginary scene my dear we we want to buy a fan for the worship team and we leave the spiritual responsibility to you engage every key you know our own is bring us a fan based on the mysteries do you know what to do what are you going to do what is step one what is step two for many of us step one is to cry step two is to argue step three is to look onto man and and step four is to be frustrated but there are others who know what to do are we together yes some of us right now unfortunately our loved ones have gone to be with the lord like the gentleman who said his father has died the, the gentleman sharing the testimony father died mother died he had to stand in as a young man for his sister but what spiritual intelligence he blessed her because he understood that things don't just happen you don't just have twins just because you you are you think you're a matured man and you have a wife that the realm of the spirit controls this realm he did that like a joke came to the house of god for reinforcement the result was as desired when your result is as desired it meant the principle was correct when you have it the way you want it it means that the principle was correct light my life like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle what do you do if you get up in the morning and just feel a sharp pain are you intelligent enough to know what to engage please koinonia listen to me i want you have to learn this thing my assignment this year is to cause you to be spiritual to understand the systems of the kingdom so you know what to do the salvation of many is dependent on your wisdom the correct application you see the bible presents the wisest perspective in all matters the wisest perspective in all matters i don't trust myself outside of the word of god the bible is not an opinion to choose what to believe and choose what to refuse it's a compendium of the wisdom of god and it says get wisdom understand how to apply the keys of the kingdom correctly and you will rise up like an edifice if i get up in the morning right now and my chest starts paining me and i start coughing blood do i know what to do or is it the day i'm in the hospital quarter to die that i start saying which message do i listen to the bible says be instant in season these keys will test you do you understand the keys listen listen the bible tells us there are arrows that fly by day i'm not scaring you is the truth are we together now what gives you guarantee that on your way to travel to kaduna or abuja tomorrow the devil is not planning to kill you what if right now god should open your eyes and you see that in the realm of the spirit they have given you 24 hours to die do you know what to engage it's risky to live not knowing what to do it's riskier to make bold face and bold statements when you have not gotten that key because you will brag and talk and talk and be whipped and punished only god knows how many covens only god knows where and where they have taken my name let this guy die let him not reach august 
only God knows the demons that have been casted out you think they don't take back reports they ask them from whence comest thou I came from Koinonia what happened this mad young man this crazy idiot called Joshua Selman casted us let's plan can we kill him in two weeks yes two more weeks yes they added two more weeks I'm still standing oh he's about to take a flight can we do something because they will plan no they will plan i i wish what i was i was telling you was a lie on tuesday we are going to eat down for pastor alpha's program what is the guarantee that you will not die in the, on acts in the accident as you are going what is the guarantee that as we are not drive the car will capsize and kill me i'm coming back for sure If I die, you can say I made noise and I died. But for as long as I'm alive, no. I found it here. The wisdom of God. Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up. Did you hear that? Men are given the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up. Now, don't feel bad if your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. Don't worry, you are alive now. The responsibility is on you you can't receive this for your family you can only intercede for them when it comes to the matters of the kingdom is first a personal affair it must become truth and life to you they are life to those who find them koinonia they are life to those who find them we live in a fierce and a wicked society if someone one of our ladies was giving me a testimony and she said how that someone came to boggle i think to boggle their room or so and carry a laptop now that whoever that thief is has stolen and has gone sad but do you understand a system in the kingdom because you need the laptop and for some of us maybe that laptop just came it was if somebody gave it to you now you are in a straight betwixt you need that laptop what key do i now engage you can't cry forever now that it has gone what do i do are you hearing what i'm saying i wish we had time tonight we are going to pray seriously i would have called a few people at random and would have just created imaginary life scenarios and i would have asked what you have learned so that we don't keep compounding mysteries upon mysteries upon mysteries there are so many other mysteries lined up that you will be learning between now and the end of the year but the key is are you getting it is it spirit and life to you hallelujah are we together one of the mysteries that i'm trusting that the lord god of heaven will help us to conquer is this thing up of poverty and lack hello believers hear me poverty and what say it poverty and poverty and lack is a mystery i told you poverty is a strategy by satan it's a strategy poverty is not just a state of mind it's a spiritual strategy one of the most effective arsenal of satan for making the lives of people useless we come from different backgrounds with different experiences but we can begin to make our choices and trust god to help us i'm not teaching on on poverty or prosperity tonight but um, my, my assignment tonight is to review and introduce us to the keys my heart I, I it kept burning in me since through the week and i said lord my prayer is that your people your people will get this thing that they will understand it and it will rise hallelujah what do you not know sister what are you still allowing inside your head that is authorizing the devil to make life miserable for you brother what is it that god has been trying to pound out of your life that you are refusing to let go me this is how it is so my my i must am this like that that's how we are in our culture where we come from is it working 
is it working be honest is it working listen one of the keys of great people is their disloyalty to any information that does not produce there's no such thing as i was born with this if it does not work dump it throw it far from you and embrace that which is capable of blessing you the scribes and the pharisees already knew the truth but because of the ethics of tradition are we together now nicodemus came to jesus by night in john chapter 3 and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god so they knew they were not in confusion but in the daytime they refused why because of the rudiments of tradition the bible says that has made the word of god of non effect as though it were not powerful Could it be that there is something this gentleman can know? He's about writing his last exam. If not because of the strike, I'm sure maybe this week or next week. He would have written his exam now and been a confirmed doctor. Now, six, seven years ago, he, he probably would have been a naive gentleman just with a desire. But he passed through a system month after month principle after principle and now after six years he's one exam to go to become a confirmed doctor and every other person called a medical doctor in the world just becomes a senior or junior colleague instantly what is the difference now whereas somebody would be convulsing eight years ago and this guy will stand confused eight years later someone will be convulsing and say it's all right it's something we can handle because something something and information your fear is a sign that you have not learned something thank you you will never be truly free from fear until knowledge bails you out fear is destroying us fear of the future fear of everything fear of death fear of living young people are afraid will i ever be established with a salary of 50,000 as a graduate when will I ever be able to build a house it will not build you a house what will build you a house is the understanding of the Word of God they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their arms save them but thou O Lord because thou shown a favor towards them you must understand the keys that are responsible for activating the things that we need in life hallelujah mother there is something you can know that can transform your children could it be that the rebellion from the children is a product of an approach that may be cultural but not scriptural cultural but not scriptural there are men who are taught beats the living daylight out of your wife is a way of showing her that you are a man she does anything beat her once she will behave you have tried it infinite times it has not changed that woman may be a sincere woman under the influence of a spirit all that she may need is one encounter with the power of god and she's free and she will be one of the nicest women in the whole world now you can manage you can beat yourself there's there was a gentleman that joined the queue after service and there were like three four five lines to him and i looked at him and i was surprised how could a spirit still be in this guy even after a very heavy service i was looking and i was seeing a spirit the guy was playing but in the realm of the spirit i was seeing so i kept quiet when the guy just came and stood close to me i said what's wrong and the guy said i'm i'm a thief i can steal anything i said ah that's it you see that that take that thief to the prison you you hang him there behind the bars and say promise and write an agreement that you will never touch anybody's biro again while he's doing that the spirit steps out and then the same human being will sign the agreement and the spirit will enter two weeks after going out something starts pushing him it's not him everybody will beat him at home and say what do i do with this child because the mystery one minute prayer how many minutes 
one minute prayer under the heavy anointing will build that guy's 10 years of misery but because see let me tell you ignorance makes pain continue it prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain Are we together? And I just, it was just a simple tap I gave him on the head. And that was the end of it. That wild, wicked spirit. Because the gentleman confessed that he was willing to be free. How about people that come here, you see someone standing, almost staggering. And you say you came, you, you smoked something before you came to church. He won't argue. That's a sign that he wants to change. But there is something he does not know see the house of god is truly a blessing it's a place where the mysteries that are responsible for your desire are given to you that's why it matters are you seeing the reason why god loves crowd the crowds are made of people the people are made of their needs they need access to the truth to be free that's how we change society i can tell you something and i say it with all my heart and with all joy by the grace of god the marriages that will happen in this ministry will be heaven on earth listen it's not just prophecy alone the keys have been given some of our loved ones here who are married you see the peace and tranquility regardless of what there are some kinds of evil that cannot happen it's gone do you know why knowledge there are people here who have married different tribes the same tribe but same knowledge the same knowledge has brought them into the same kingdom culture i've said it again and again that we will all be great you believe that prophecy and that the best part is that we will all know ourselves you will see it it will start one step don't forget about what you have not gotten today line upon line you are walking you are taking that step and it's in the name of the lord and God is helping you you may not look like it but the hand of God is upon you there is a mystery that is navigating you towards the right path hallelujah Christianity is not a religion Christianity is a work that should be approached with the wisdom of God the Word of God represents the wisdom of God what is the wisdom of God the scriptural solution to every problem on earth the scriptural approach his modus operandi his method is called his wisdom God's approach to life is his wisdom God's approach to life is his wisdom and the Bible is full of it Jesus himself the epitome of wisdom when he came upon the earth we saw the way he approached life the spirit of the Christ empowered several people from Genesis to Revelation and they manifested dimensions of living that were supernatural, enviable, admirable. And the Lord has said, this is our year of triumph. We are not going to triumph just through desire. It will be on the strength of what we know. Hallelujah. There is something we must know. There is something I need to know to be higher than where I am my limitation in life right now is the limitation of how far I've been able to access the wisdom of God there's more I've only scratched the surface if I submit myself and I learn more I rise more because I begin to see how predictable my life can be on the strength of wisdom my journey so far is a journey of searching the wisdom of God like a man in a gold mine searching for it when you find it you rejoice because you can stand on the strength there was something i found out about the anointing there was something i found out about miracles signs and wonders it didn't just happen there was a day i found it there was a day i found something about favor it wasn't always like that it's not just time that brought favor no time just continued passing and by the mercy and the grace of god something was accessed listen there is something you can access today that can make your seven days 
be equivalent to the blessings of five years it's not a prayer it's the truth there is something you can find that can compress the sufferings and the hardship of men my assignment to you this year is to help you understand this and to through emphasis reiterate it again and again until it becomes your conviction if it is not your conviction you will never walk in it let me tell you the truth these things i teach were not things i started teaching this year i've started teaching it before so don't think it's because god has helped today now i say it's easy to no 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 the wisdom of god what is god's call to you tonight stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing if you are not getting it settle down something is wrong did you hear what i said stop guessing prophesy to somebody stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing no stop guessing everybody doesn't like me what do i do stop guessing there is an exact principle that is responsible for delightsomeness stop guessing why is it that everything i touch doesn't work stop guessing please say it again say it to somebody stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing inside outside online stop guessing it's risky to guess the moment anything is not working in my life i settle down i need to look at this something must be wrong there is something i'm not understanding it makes your journey easier than just guessing trial and error you don't have that much of time for trial and error man of god the power of god is not flowing in your life stop guessing did you hear what i said stop guessing you are not getting something you pray for somebody and say it is done he goes to another man of god just looking at him and the demon goes out stop guessing you just told the guy it is done it is not done the, the guy still has the spirit is still there are we together the person came to you for prayer you now came and said oh um, i've been suffering bad luck my whole life everything is going wrong and he said really father we thank you we ask that um, this gentleman be free he says amen now the fact that he said amen does not mean heaven said amen the pastor prayed don't say they prayed for me who prayed for you what did the person who prayed for you know what did he know while he was praying for you i can pray for this person but the efficacy of my prayer is tied to the limitation of the knowledge i know don't just say they prayed for you who prayed for you and what was what what is the the reservoir of the spiritual knowledge that was resident in the person who prayed for you it's not just that they prayed for you so you tell this guy go in the name of jesus it is done this gentleman goes and nothing happens stop guessing the person comes somewhere else other than your own place are we together and stands and someone looks at him and says hold my hand i bless you that's it this gentleman walks out before he gets home an alert has come a call has come is that guessing no sir a gentleman prays for twins over his sister comes for koinonia drops the result when he was praying the twins did not know they were praying for them but they still came out as twins is that guess remember he was not the husband of the wife he was a brother ah. if you can pray for twins and they come out twins think of what else you can determine write on paper and say after two years rent over you wrote it on paper two years later you are standing in your own house where you can set the rules and not have anyone harass you do you believe this that means there's something you can write about your job and say in the name of jesus by october i am employed gainfully employed and then you write a salary structure lord i'm trusting you 
150 to 200,000. While you are writing it, those who don't know God say you are a stupid person. Don't mind them. Don't be angry. They are only revealing to you what they have not been taught. So don't argue. You argue you have brought yourself down. You write it. By October, you are on a job. 150,000. For what he said, he's able to do. Are we together? Yes. You can make up your mind and say in the name of Jesus, I love God. But I'm not going to marry a fool. I won't marry a stupid man. I'm going to marry somebody that loves God, loves me and is serious. While you are saying it, your friends will say, you, you better just say yes to any man that comes. So the way we do this thing now, go online, find any photo you want, click like on Facebook, pursue that person till he says yes and marry quietly. That is their own way. And they will give you one or two testimonies of those who it worked for. Did they tell you they are in peace now? You say it and you confess. And you don't just confess as a lady and stop there. You now say, okay, I understand that life is about partnership. Lord, what is my contribution? You can't sit down not doing anything and want God to carry his son that he has refined and worked upon. Worked diligently upon him. Brought out the best in him and, and just give you. God is not unjust. Are we together? Lord, what do I need to do? And God starts working on you. Materialism, throw it out. Be mouthy and talking anyhow, throw it out. You must be of a meek and a quiet spirit. You want to marry a great man, this your talk talk, you will tear down his business. God has helped this guy before your arrival. You won't come as a destroyer. Are you ready? And so you are, he's walking. He's taking it out of you. In two months, you, have, you are transformed. You have become such a virtuous lady. You who will be running your mouth, talking all kinds of things. You who say, if, if the guy does not have this, if there's no jeep, I will marry. God has worked on you. And that way, he can now bring you to the person he has destined for you. And you will now be a blessing. The same way as a guy, any lady you see, ah, this lady is pretty. You are not doing anything. You are not serious. You don't know God. You don't know the loss of life. There's no structural establishment. God is not helping you. Yet you are just standing and making noise. The systems of God. Oh, I want to be a great pastor. And you start a church. One year, two years, three years, you are still on four members. Then you start criticizing and say, it's not everybody that has crowd. Oh, keep quiet. You are not getting something. Find out lord what what am i missing and god says one no wisdom two the level of grace there's no result three people are not being changed everybody you prayed for there's no testimony why should people come members are not idiots they will run to where god will visit them criticize them they will not stop members are not stupid in this nigeria of today oh no no people are wise you can keep running your mouth against people while people look for where their solutions are in the rain they will stand in the sun they will stand because what they are going through is, is worse than the sun so they will stand anywhere to make sure they receive please i want you to make up your mind today that anything that is not working in your life just know remember what i said stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing just calm down invite the holy spirit spirit of the living god i am not getting something i am not getting something a meek heart i am not getting something you gave me a beautiful wife now i hate her no affection for my wife again you bless me i'm about to throw my wife out of the house i don't give money nothing what is wrong spirit of the living god help me help me and then light comes dwell with them according to knowledge ah that means there's something i do not understand i think my wife is another man now the bible is bailing me out are we together yes so the next time you meet your wife and she asks you she say how was the how was the um, how was your job today and you say fine say no give me details you won't get angry you will know that that's how women are dwell with them according so you will start we went by 7 a.m uh -huh. by eight o'clock they gave us tea uh -huh. they, you are paying that price because you now understand the systems while you are paying that price what are you going to get a reward you will get a hug you will get a nice meal and you will get you a darling you see that 
you made adjustment or you can stand and brag and say me i'm a one word man and punish yourself and your life will not go forward how about employees that never get promoted and think it's just demons if you like pour one gallon of anointing oil in your head you are not productive when they want to downsize people they give you you came to work two months they gave you warning you are not productive sir customer relations zero friendliness at work zero on the job zero experience zero humility to learn zero initiative zero even if i'm the one who employed you you are going yes you are going that you are a member of coin you are not productive so instead of just sitting down to get angry and say my boss is a wicked man do you know how much that guy collects 1.2 and he's giving me fifty thousand. no lord i love my boss i pray for him in the name of jesus i declare he is a leader there is something he knows that is setting him above he may not be a very nice man but in the name of jesus i pray for him and i love him and you walk up to him and say sir i just want to say thank you i've been working here eight months and i appreciate your mentorship and your leadership i just brought this wine to say thank you say what what, what is it for i mean I'm, I'm paying you no 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 sir i want to thank you much more than the salary you are changing my life if there is anything that can make me improve i am ready to learn always know that you are finding a very worthy mentee in me thank you sir and you go out you have programmed something he will act as if he did enter him keep watching the day promotion is coming and then somebody now comes to say do you know this person is yoruba he says hey, shut up it's my company it's my job you gave him memories you showed him that you were ready to learn the moment you step out he writes your name thank god this is the person i've been looking for and then he calls you one day and gives you a very difficult task and you start saying kai my boss has been on my case for two months he's testing you he's seeing that you are the next person who should be the director of that department he you have you are earning his trust but your lack of understanding is making you interpret it as wickedness you brought your boss's name for uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, miracle service you dropped it on and not just you didn't just write his name you say oh god punish this guy frustrate the tokens of this and that whereas listen if you had understanding and wisdom you would know that that's your lifting why does he ask me to stay back when others are going and then he gives me a hard job and then he shouts at me and i apologize and he does not say sorry he's not a fool there's something he knew that made him the boss keep watching while he's acting he's taking note one day he calls you and says look um i know that it's not my character to do this but i want you to know that i am absolutely impressed i have watched you for six months all the other people are arguing around those who are insulting him and then he lifts you overnight and then you continue praying for him again will he be perfect no he would do foolish things he would do stupid things but he's still your boss one day he calls you and says look you are so smart why are you still working in this corporation i think you are smart enough to have your own company and he says look call abc and tell them i said they should help you and in three years you have become a ceo of yourself you have become colleagues brothers and sisters lack of wisdom is destroying us are we not seeing this thing our interpretation about people and life is a product of a, a bankruptcy of life we call light darkness we call darkness light are we together we call a process failure we call failure defeat we don't know how to allocate names based on wisdom we call everything everything but god is teaching us tonight that the kingdom of god has systems i came with a fire burning in my spirit tonight that if you can learn the systems of god you will laugh when others are frowning and they will ask you why are you frowning and then you say there's a light that i see that's why i'm laughing you know in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that I see only comes alive 
Every time I hear your voice, it comes, it comes alive. Every time I hear your voice, there's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy in my soul only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice and there's a peace in my heart in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and these beats that I have only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes it comes alive every time it comes, it comes alive Every time I hear your voice Do you know why? Because you know You don't rejoice when things happen You rejoice to make them happen It says rejoice in the Lord always So you don't rejoice just because you feel like No, the Holy Ghost moves you You have rent, you are writing Trouble, you are writing no child you are writing no job you are writing no wife you are writing and at the end of it you are dancing and people say ah, i've been hearing a song he said no 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 it's not it. i am dancing because this is what happens knowledge are you hearing what i'm saying now and people look at you and say ah, ah promise would you is it not you that I saw the landlord embarrassing you? You claim you are going to church and you can't pay simple 40,000. The moment you hear, don't worry. The normal thing is agitation, but use intelligence in the spirit. You get back and say, Lord, I may not have 40,000 now, but I have you. I have peace. I have joy. I may go through embarrassment now, but I know that the God I serve, the God I serve, the God I serve can arise for me. They may mock you and say all kinds of things. Know that a mock is a sign that satan is already agitated by your success there is something he's seen mockery is a mystery in the spirit it's a sign that your result is appearing already let me tell you hear this hear this if anybody mocks you they gave you a sign that something is already arriving i promise you know this i'm teaching you deep mysteries mockery is a mystery Madam, are you a man or a woman? This is 10 years and you are not married. Ooh, start rejoicing, don't cry. It's a sign that a parcel has left heaven. Something is coming. Satan can see. And so he says, look, frustrate them. Men walk by their senses. Do something, frustrate them. But those who are spiritual know, they get inside the room and start dancing. Lord, you are so good. Hey, you are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as a Lord most high. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as a Lord most high. Listen. And then everything starts agitating you. You go to the place of work, they are insulting you. You come back for the results, they are insulting you. Don't, don't cry. If you cry, you are not wise. You begin to rejoice. And you go to Satan. Satan, what did you see that is making you restless? What have you seen? What did you see about my baby that is making... Because you see... The attacks were not like that. The attacks are a reaction. Satan has lived long in this planet. He knows we walk by sight. But for those who have been able to grow spiritually, you don't find their tears. You say, Satan, if I will ever cry, it's to God. Oh, it's not to you. Job, 
was in a state in his life where nothing was working job was on the ground sat down on the ground and his wife told him he said cause god and die job said why are you talking like one of these stupid women ha god though he slay me though he slay me are we together now job's friends came from everywhere and everybody was talking every kind of nonsense let me tell you one of the worst things that can happen to you is to sit down and allow your life to be a subject of debate from people who are bringing all kinds of useless opinions but you love god why did you have the accident but you love why <coughs> joy joy forever who has killed your joy today i show you that it's an attack over something that is arriving who has killed your joy you prayed about finances your destiny helper is about to come but the devil is wrinkling your face with trouble hey they didn't pay salary i understand i understand i wanted to eat well today now that you cannot eat god you are faithful now you be god almighty god you know be my lord you know be my lord now you be god now you be god almighty god you know be my lord you know be my lord now you be god now you be god almighty god that's how you know to be my lord you know life and destiny i can't be too mature to stop believing the word no sir it is the foolishness of men to stop believing god for anything god cannot do cannot be done anything god cannot do cannot be done no Blasting tongues for one minute. Hey, hey. 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 
Don't allow the devil shake you. Lord of Judah, my trust is in you. The agent of day, my trust is in you. I am that I am, my trust is in you. You say, My trust is in you. Oh, a lion of Judah. My trust is in you. The ancient of days. My trust is in you. Oh, I put them on you. Say, My trust is in you. Hallelujah. Please hold hands together everywhere, inside and outside. And let's begin to pray in the spirit. This results we must command it. Results are commandable. Those online followers, hold hands with everybody close to you. Any nation, day or night, go ahead, connect in the spirit. Inside, outside, pray. We are men of faith and power. I want you to believe the things that I'm teaching you and I promise you your life will surprise you we're going to take some time to pray that's why I'm stopping here I just sense that grace to pray prayer point number one I insist that I must succeed lift your voice and pray don't be quiet open your mouth everything Adam called Success is my destiny. Make a daily bakosa. Shakata pa. Ipa pa ta pe te te ta. Palata pa ta 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 ta. Ipa la le te te bras. I have decided to walk with Jesus No turning back No turning back I have decided to walk with Jesus No turning back No turning back Prophesy your desire I have decided the wisdom to walk of with Jesus. Jesus. No turning back. No turning. No turning back. I have decided to walk with Jesus. No turning back. No Follow Jesus. No turning back. 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 No tur
for foolish and ignorant people to laugh at you while you walk the principles of the kingdom though men forsake me still i will follow no turning back no turning, no turning back though men forsake me still i will follow no turning back no for obedience to walk the mysteries of the kingdom till they produce for me lift your voice and pray grace 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 to apply the kingdom grace to apply the kingdom the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries for prosperity the mysteries for peace for progress for influence grace, grace, grace you need grace pray Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't think we are rounding up. We have some prayers to do. Listen, I want you to mention the areas of challenge in your life and say, Lord, what mystery, what system in the kingdom are the results of this pain tied to reveal to me? Lift your voice and pray. Mention them. Don't keep quiet. Lord, my growth rate is slow. What is the system in the kingdom that is responsible for speed? I cry for revelation. Are you praying? Are you praying? Lord, I love you. I've seen the anointing on my life, but my finances are dying. Living from hand to mouth, what allocation in the kingdom is responsible for that result? Lord, I love you. I enjoy a healthy prayer life. My prayer life is robust, but there are no helpers in my life. What am I missing? What am I missing? Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but, but, but he was a valiant man in war. He excelled in an area. But there was an area that was bankrupt. Show me, open my eyes. Open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. Keep praying. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, the door shall be opened. We knock on that door. Jesus, the door, reveal to me. Jesus. 
Don't stop praying. La paroto sobe kato shekete ni kata. Enka la kato sakata kata. Shala baraka taka kato shokotos. Epre kato soto bakata. Makaria ta so sekete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Every door that opened before and then closed must open again. No, it must open again. No, lift your voice and cry, Lord. Wherever I missed it, I asked for mercy, but that door must open again. You showed me favor once, you must show me favor again. You gave me victory once, you must give me victory again. Pray. You sent me help us once. They must appear again. My hand has tasted prosperity once. It must come back again. I enjoyed speed before. I cried for restoration. I once was a landlord. Now I'm a tenant. Take me back, oh God. Restore my glory, restore my honor, restore my glory, restore my honor, restore the anointing. I used to carry the healing anointing once, but it no longer is working. Restore it, oh God. Restore the fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That the grace that is responsible for compelling men to apply the kingdom until they get result may that grace be released on you now may that grace be released on you now may that grace be released on you now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every area of your life where Satan has taken an advantage of by the power that is in the name of Jesus I force restoration I force restoration beginning from tonight I declare the mysteries that will bail you out of any trouble you are in it must be revealed to you tonight in the name of Jesus and finally I pray for you I will keep praying this until I see it in your life the kind of favor you have never seen may the God I serve make it happen in your life I release upon you the ministry of the gift of man the gift of man the gift of man in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there are people here please keep standing everyone there are people standing here inside outside and many online who have never truly acknowledged the Lordship of Jesus and whilst you heard me speak the Holy Spirit kept speaking to you that you need a new beginning for others you have loved Jesus but things have happened in your life here and there that require an encounter with God you need a rededication our time is gone wherever you are please I know there will be people coming from outside I want to count one to five very quickly wherever you are I want you to leave your seat and boldly come here. Say, Apostle, I want you to pray for me. I'm not ashamed to start afresh with Jesus. Make your way here. Don't wait for someone to come before you come. Be the first. Be bold. Come. God bless you. I appreciate them. They are coming. They need a lot of motivation. God bless you. Those of you coming from outside, wherever you are, make your way quickly. Bless you, my dear. Bless you, my dear. Quickly, come stand. Gentlemen, God bless you. God bless you. Quickly, are you coming? win that war win that war make your way to jesus quickly you sang that you will serve him forever you sang that you will love him forever 
those coming from outside double up can you run quickly run to Jesus run to Jesus make that decision make that decision make that decision let's appreciate them you have one more minute and I'll pray for you one more minute and I'll pray for you are there still people coming from outside clear the way ushers help them so they come quickly clear the way for them God bless you God bless you hallelujah praise the Lord thank you so much please join us very quickly thank you my brothers um, I appreciate your very bold decision everybody must have a beginning with God a time when you have an encounter with him I want you to mean this sincerely from your heart you're not reciting a poem believe it and the Lord will help you lift your right hand and say this sincerely and passionately say Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I come before you tonight asking you to forgive my sins asking you to cleanse me tonight Jesus is Lord of my heart Lord of my soul Lord of my body I declare that eternal life is mine I am a child of God from today and forever keep your hands lifted Jesus I present to you the ones you died for I decree and declare that the grace that preserves the grace that keeps and the grace that builds be released upon them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the hand of God is upon you let tonight be a new beginning for you in the name of Jesus Christ victory unto victory that's what I speak over your life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you ladies and gentlemen for this decision hold on I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands and um, you follow them they will just have a few words with you and communicate